right, let's do a cheers to the Sobeys and Sabre Liquid Beer for the podcast. The the right again. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Careful. That takes hot. What's going on, everybody? Dusty and Lieutenant Eric with you. I'm fully on board. How do? Yes, 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 yes. Very exciting. Creed. Oh, Creed. Hey, we we'll get Creed. Hey. Well, we do have the Creed song that we can uh, sneak in. I'm pretty sure, like, we tested a lot of things. I'm pretty sure we just straight up played Creed. Nobody's going to say a thing. Really? I what's mean, what's the Matthew Iwanica phrase again? Uh, you know, ask ask for forgiveness. Uh, ask for forgiveness. Before the permission. I mean, just do Except it. Except yeah. for the one day Zactacum was late. God, that was the best. That was the best thing ever. <laughs> Zactica, one morning when he was in, he was a little bit late. He got here at like six o'clock. It's like needing like at least a half hour to get ready. Anyway, um, they, they were sitting out there after that day, and Zactica was like, "It was kind of like what Matt says, right? About uh, asking for forgiveness rather than permission." And Eric goes, "He goes, yeah, you should have asked yesterday if you could have been late today." <laughs> oh, I do God. like, I do I was like us in the office. I was just killing myself laughing. Getting a text, hey guys, do you mind if I'm? Yeah, 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 I, mean, yeah. Sure. I like that. No yeah, you know what? I like that. Yeah, shoot your shot. Yeah, yeah. coming late. Thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. The warning Let's is nice. That. It's nice. <laughs> what a what a beauty. Oh, that was uh, that was too good. My goodness, a cogs for a cogs yeah. for Zach to be like. Maybe next time I'll ask if I could be late earlier. I, uh, <laughs> Uh, we got a little bit of a streak going on right now. Trev, can you turn up my headphones a little bit? I might just be going a little bit uh, more deaf, but uh, uh, we got a little bit of a streak going on because we hit 400 likes on Friday. Yeah. And then yesterday during the show, we hit like 340. But it was brought to my attention that by yesterday afternoon, with people watching the show later on, we hit 400 again. So two, two is a streak. They call that the, uh, the eclipse bump. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, that had to have been. So now we're hoping to keep it alive. Right? You don't want to be a part of something that ruins the streak. So hammer the thumbs up if you're watching this morning. We'll try to remind people as we work our way through the show today. If we don't get like at least 120 thumbs up, 100, maybe 140 oh. by 7 o'clock, I'm going to spend the entire second hour of the show talking about Nike's uh, logo for Wembenyama. It's a basketball that kind of looks like an alien. It's great. It's actually really well done. I don't know if you saw this. It's, it looks real. We nice. know what we can do. There's no reason why we can't. This morning, exactly. We but are we just going to continue to get worse and worse? It we have the sense. power within us. I remember when getting two hundred likes was kind of cute. Now we've set a new standard. I'm not even saying we. You guys have set a new standard. So let's let's keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Yeah. <laughs> when you see yourself, when you hear somebody say rolling, rolling, Limp rolling, biscuit. do you think Limp biscuit or do you think the old one, the rawhide? 
Oh wow, right, that ride! Rolling, 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 rolling. When you when you sit like that, yeah. Rolling, rolling, rolling. And the dance too. You got to grab your junk and then do. Yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to do that on dance oh, floors. Oh, didn't we all? Hey. Man, those are good times. <laughs> do kids go out and dance the limp biscuit anymore? Was that kind of like, grabbing your was junk? That just us. Yeah, the times were simpler. God, I remember. I remember just at at like dance bars when limp biscuit would come on, we would like semi mosh pit. And we would legitimately try to injure our friends. Weird times, man. Weird times. That was at Caddy's in Lethbridge back in the day. Great place. Great place. A lot of fun there. They had cages that you could go up and dance in. Maybe a few stories uh, during the confession segment later on today. Maybe, I mean, maybe. Probably <laughs> <From> Caddy's, not. <laughs> probably not, but maybe. I mean, who knows? Anyway, hammer the, uh, hammer the thumbs up. If we get to 300 by confessions, I'll tell you a caddy story, which still doesn't make sense to this day. I, I do have one. All right. Yeah. Let's go. I don't know. We, uh, I'm going to start new accounts just to get more a, thumbs just a, to get the story. It's a high idea. bar to set. Um, and I'll look, a spoiler alert, it's not a great story. Well. But it is a story, and I said I tell it. Uh, you can text us anytime. Let's get going. Uh, tube socks, a little overzealous, I believe the, uh, the phrasing is. Tube socks already today sending in his macromala intros. For tomorrow. <laughs> you naughty boy. Yeah. Uh, ESC legal analyst and guy who's never stared directly at anything. Eric McAbrow. A real good McAbrow intro to waste the day after the eclipse. Do you eclipse? The, how did you celebrate your eclipse day? I, I was outside for a brief moment. I tilted my head upward, and then I was like, "Ah, it's bright!" And then I put my head back down, and that was That's it. About it. Yeah. Usually, I mean, any other day you stare at the sun too, and it's very bright. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if you knew it. I, I don't know why all you're of you're not supposed to stare at the sun. I think. Yes, a, a, a thank quick you. Glance, you can you can kind of like you can see the orb if you kind of. We you talked know? yesterday, like every other day of the year, it's okay to stare at the sun. No, no, it's not. Well, yeah, exactly, <laughs> not at all. The thing that keeps us all alive. Don't look at it, but especially yesterday, don't look at it when it's partially covered. I mean, if you're ever going to look at it tomorrow, yesterday would have probably been the day, but um, apparently it wasn't. Uh, my extent, my extent of consuming the eclipse yesterday, was in between shows, staring at us, or maybe after, maybe after oil stream yesterday. I walked over to talk. Maddie, Maddie was in his office. I walk over, and say, "Hey, where's the sun?" And he's like, "I don't know. It's out there somewhere." So I looked out the two windows, didn't see it. I was like, "Oh, lame eclipse." Classic office eclipse joke, okay? Yeah. And then in another forty years or whatever, we'll do it all over again. Where's Where's the sun? Yeah. Anyway, couldn't uh, couldn't see it. How does the uh, how does the moon get a haircut? Eclipse it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I, uh, my parents my parents told the kids a joke yesterday that they were okay. They had their uh, viewfinders. The, the kids or whatever, had eh? their cereal box viewfinders. They were home yesterday. Marshall's got a little bit of a uh, like he's been a little pukey the last belly day aching. or so. Yeah, a little belly issue. <laughs> So, yeah, he stayed home yesterday, and the Muzz was like, well, I'm not going to school if he's not going to school. So they stayed home yesterday and checked out. They made these cereal boxes to watch the uh, the clothes. I remember doing it once before, like six, seven, seven years ago for, like, a partial, maybe. We've done the cereal box eclipse thing in the past. Um, but, yeah, so that uh, that went down yesterday. But, anyway, my parents told the kids a joke on a FaceTime on Sunday. That's so lame, but Elizabeth told it to me like four times yesterday, and I still laughed a little bit. So, Eric, repeat, or Pete and repeat are in a boat. Pete falls out. Okay. Who's left? Pete and repeat. Repeat. Pete and repeat are in a boat. Pete falls out. Who's left? <laughs> My mom had to do it three times before oh. I caught on. I was just like, huh? What? And then when she did it the third time, I was like, oh, repeat. I, mean, I, I get it. I get it. Anyway, it's been a hot couple weeks with the April Fool's yeah, prank and now this yeah, joke. No, this and, hilarious uh, wow. joke. Surveyor Brett, put it in your phone. <laughs> Pete, repeat joke debuted Tuesday, April 9th. Yeah. Anyway, parents, tell it to your kids. Kids, if you're listening, tell it at school. You're going to be known as the class ham. Hell of a time That's consumer, a, hey? Uh, yeah. You could yeah was, see how uh, many rounds you can take it. Yeah, that was, uh, that was good. I, I thought it was kind of funny. Well, Elizabeth told me yesterday, and I still kind of chuckled a little bit. I was just like, ah. The problem with her is that she would go on 20 times. Well, what's the record? Like, like, if you can get to 10, I mean, yeah. that's... 
How lewd. It's like the song that never ends. Yeah. It goes on and on, my friends. Some people started singing and not knowing what it was. But I want somebody. And continue. Yeah. <laughs> Repeat. <laughs> Pete. And we... Repeat, damn it. Well, what? <laughs> Repeat's in the book. Where's, where's Pete? <laughs> Uh, all right, 780 9999 uh, Atif is in and says, Boys, when I hear rolling, 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 I think of myself rolling everywhere. And The Undertaker. <laughs> Atif also Well, that it. was uh, good. Well, the American badass, I guess. But uh, Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's good. 780-218-9999. It is the Paris Jewelers Inbox. If you want to chime in today, that is where you could eventually... And uh, we had two people yesterday qualify for the trip and say they're going to take their kids to Vegas. The guy in the old stream yesterday was like, yes, I'm going to take my daughter. I was like, oh, how old's oh, your wow. daughter? Eight. I was like, what? He goes, we're going to go to a hockey game if we win this. And I thought, yes, that's actually, uh, that's actually a pretty good move. So the Paris Jewelers inbox unlocks so many different opportunities for you. It's the ring box. It's the bling box. It's the Paris Jewelers inbox. Yeah, they got lots of fancy, uh, shiny things. Look at this, look at that. Not just for the ladies. They got jewelry for men, too. The ring box, the bling box. It's the Paris Jewelers Ding box. Ooh, la, la. Ooh, la, la. They've got things for every budget. Flexible financing options do not pay until 2025. Canadian, family-owned, 22 locations across the country. So you know they're good. If you need any sort of jewelry, maybe you're getting married. Maybe you're getting engaged. Go see our friends at PJs. Visit them, www.parisjewelers.com. Or just for the hell of it, hey? Yeah. Just spring a gift down on your significant other. You know what nice I suggest? nice, sparkly, bejeweled gift. I was going to go the other way. Even if you're not dating anybody, go buy an engagement ring and just have it. Right? Start to pay for it so that you don't get... So when you meet the one that you really love... And uh, she goes, well, I think we could get married, but you better save up for a ring. And you go, no, I already have one. She's going to think that's totally normal, and she's totally not going to bail on you immediately. Well, you could, you could dress it up as I've had this ring yeah. for so long. Like, you should, you the make journey that, and like Take a picture of yourself with the pre-purchased ring from Paris Jewelers and have it as your Tinder profile. And just have a picture of you up like this, and all your profile says is, I'm ready. Yeah, come and get it. Yeah, that's good. Paris Jewelers. Why not get married? That's their new slogan. Uh, so keep those text messages coming. The one text I don't want you to send in today, because I know a lot of you would, and you probably end up winning text of the day. Purdue, more like per don't. Let's. Uh, I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm saying that one. I'm claiming that one right now. So none of you can try to win text of the day with that. Okay, that's out. That's done. I said it first. Nobody else can win text of the day with it. We'll get to that with the morning announcements coming. You con. They did. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm texting it in right now. I, I don't know if that one works, yeah. but that's okay. Not even the power of Drew Brees, hey? Could, could, I know I Drew mean, Brees thought, flexing still didn't help. I thought that would have been just enough to... That's what happens when you, as a team, only have one play. Well, it's, and I guess it, any team can say, you know, our team name nation. It is Huskies Nation now. <laughs> Really, yeah. in the states, when it comes to basketball, well, they've they've dominated, and we'll we'll get into this. Uh, let's lay out the show for you quickly. All, all of your text messages to the Paris Jewelers inbox. One of those text messages will end up claiming text of the day, and who knows? Maybe in the end, text of the year. A and W. What's better than one Mama Burger, made in delicious fashion? It's two Mama Burgers for only nine ninety nine. The two Mamas for nine ninety nine only goes until April fourteenth. So you got to get on that. Edmonton, St. Albert, Sherwood Park, Devon. What a deal. And uh, for your convenience, most a w drive throughs are open 24 hours a day. Six o'clock hour, kind of wide open. Kane and Perry did speak yesterday. We'll get to that after 6.30 today. Uh, everything's fine. Everything's well, normal. I want to take the time to apologize. I got it all wrong yesterday. You thought it was an issue. I thought fighting, and I thought, like, yelling and swearing and slamming bench gates. Um... You know, for for the second time in a in a month or whatever it was, but I I had it all wrong and I apologize. I, that was uh, I want more of it. Northside sandwiches in it says you con more like you win. That's pretty good. Yeah, you know what? None of us took that one. You can text that in. Could be text of the day. Swish. Uh, EST is launching a birdie juice. More details on that. We hit it in the third hour yesterday, but we're gonna get to that coming up. 
And Trev's just like, oh, what? This is amazing. This is amazing. How come nobody told me? Uh, so we'll get to all of that as we work our way towards uh, 7 o'clock today. Evander K was good yesterday. His availability, a little spicy. Wanting checks from local members of the media who talk about him, it's great. And he's right. We're all that. a little too sensitive these days, I would say. Yeah, the world is soft. Very I mean, soft. Try to raise my kids as hard as I possibly can, but at the same time, I let them do whatever they want. Encourage more fighting between them. That's, That's what I would issue, do. Yeah. Well, good morning, kids. Elizabeth, I want you to punch your brother in the balls right now. Yes. What? She would be like, thanks, Daddy. Boom. Bam. Pop it. Marshall. Oh, my nuts. Uh, Craig Button's going to join us just after uh, 7 o'clock today. We'll get his thoughts on the Edmonton Oilers down the stretch. Just two games in the National Hockey League last night. We'll break down both of those with Button. As we like to say on the lock shop, a full slate today. Full slate today in the National Hockey League. NBA as well. <laughs> Full slate in the NBA, too. 14 which, games. Woo, 14 games in the association. We're back. And on Masters Week and everything else like that. Uh, Justin Ray is going to join us tomorrow morning. Jay Ray. I was trying to get him today. You got to follow Justin Ray on Twitter if you want master stats. He's got a stat for everything. He's a master stat savant. Was he doing the Q&A last night as well during the, uh, the March Madness? No idea. I do believe. Cool bed hotline of the day coming up here around 720. Weekly confessions at 7.30 today. Keyword for the EST flyaway to Vegas. 7.45 today. And I says pardon shortly after that. Third hour. Kind of easy trivia for Mr. Mike Steakhouse. Casual. Casual place ever. Smart people. Six o'clock or longer is on tap. Three questions too many for Park Mazda. Joaquin Gage going to pop by for Pro-Am Sports as well. He'll be by around 8.30 today. So we do have a busy program for you this morning let's dive into your morning announcements for 100.3 the bear evans is best rock i'd like to start with the basketball game or i'd like to start with raw but this is canada so we should probably start with the nhl slate last night just two games on tap, we'll get into both of those uh, morning announcements. Brought to you by 100.3 The Bear. You, Connor McCord, every single morning. And our girl, Jess Jackson, taking you home every single afternoon with the best rock in the city, including Foo Fighters and other rock bands. Moist. in the uh, and, and Yeah, Foo Fighters and Moist. Yeah. That's a good one, Eric. I like, uh, I like that. NHL last night, the Vancouver Canucks continuing to build up that cushion, trying to stay ahead. Of your Edmonton Oilers, 4-3 win over the Golden Knights last night. The Golden Knights manipulating the LTIR once again to get Thomas Hurdle back. Carrier gets added retroactively to the LTIR. They're geniuses. This is uh, this is the Vegas Golden Knights, and the LTIR is below my fingers, and I'm one of those puppet guys, and I'm just pulling the str- puppeteering the uh, the LTIR. They- they're, u- they're using their coupons. That's worked out well. And, and, and you know, every, everybody else can use coupons as well, but... Thomas Hurdle in his uh, Golden Knights debut, an assist, and minus one. Oh. So he oh. sucks. Uh, and they, they haven't won with him yet. So a, a nice win for Vancouver. Oh, and one in the Hurdle yeah. era. Hey, yeah. Vancouver is five points up on the Oilers. If the Canucks go two and two in their final four, the Oilers will have to go five to one to win the division. I don't even know if it matters if they win the division. So I know some people. Blah, blah. Who cares about raising a regular season banner? You know what happens here in Edmonton? You raise banners for people who get in the Hall of Fame. You think you can raise a banner for winning a division? Please waste the time. If they win the division, it'll be the greatest thing. If they don't, it's mm. moot, moot topic. I know. And that so is, that is how it'll whatever, be. Whatever whatever happens happens. Yeah. But uh, we're here for it. Uh, Pittsburgh Penguins they lose, get a but point. they did get a point. And that is a pretty, pretty, pretty big point. Big point. I didn't mean to do that because of the curb final. <laughs> I just, I, I did it. I didn't, I didn't do it on purpose. Mind you, I heard the Curb Your Enthusiasm final was like basically the exact same thing as the Seinfeld final. Oh, is that right? Yeah, spoiler alert. But I dropped it, off in that show at the yeah. end. I still like the earlier uh, days. Different twist at the end. I'm probably going to have to watch that at some point. Uh, Sidney Crosby did not score a goal for us. That was our lock shot play of the day yesterday. Or I was uh, cool bet hotline. I did hit the lock shot play of the day. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, McCabe wins it in overtime. Crosby did have one assist in this hockey game. Austin Matthews buries goal 65 as he continues to try to push to 70 markers for the Toronto Maple Leafs. The loss in regulation for the Golden Knights means that they are still currently in one of the wild card spots. 
Los Angeles Kings have worked their way back up to third in the Pacific, and uh, that'll be an interesting race down the stretch as well. Oilers pretty much home free in at least second and five points back of the Canucks. Blue Jays win their home opener. That was, yeah. was kind of nice. What do you, what do you think of the uh, the renovations, I guess? The first time we were kind of seeing it in game setting and all that. Doesn't... I don't care. Like, I miss the blue. Everything was blue. And it kind yeah, of yeah. it did kind of remind me of the Toronto Argonauts in a way. You know how they used to share the Sky Dome and all that. But it's new. It's it's something different. Um, it's got that brick, you know, like most of the, the modern day parks have. But I don't care until I get to see it in person. Okay. I'm sorry. Like, watch it on TV, sure, whatever. Well, but that's that's the most times you get to view the Yeah, the, I mean, I get. I the guess. regular. I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't know. They've I got this know. row. Like, it, it's that wall, and then there's, like, the, the people that sit behind. But there's only, like, before you could see, like, seats, and, like, they'd be cut. This is just, like, you're going to see the same 15 people. And they're just, like, it looks like a they jury or something sitting there. there. The like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Luis Castillo is still struggling as well. 0-3 now, and ERA flirting with, like, 7. Well, that's not good. Yeah, it's not good at all. Uh, Blue Jays win their opener. And then UConn last night against Purdue in the NCAA March Madness game. Uh, by the way, the the final viewing numbers for the women's game, what was it, 18 million? Anywhere in the last five years. Yeah. Bigger than is, any. Like, it was it's pretty impressive. This is Canada, though. And uh, USA and Canada last night won nothing in overtime in the Women's World Hockey Championships. Canada faced Sweden Thursday quarterfinal matchup. So now it's for real. Hockey. Now it's for real. Now it's for real. 18 million watch Caitlin Clark uh, end up losing and a perfect season on the other side for South Carolina. I don't think the number will be as good on the men's game last night. UConn, though, my goodness. As a fan of college basketball, UConn is brilliant offensively. The movement that they have away from the ball, the movement that they have with the ball, their ability to crash the boards against seven foot four Canadian Zach Eady, extremely impressive as well. And Purdue just, I don't know if Purdue knew anything that was going on in that basketball game. Like they were down 13 with, I don't know how many minutes to play. They were down basically, what do we say? They were down 13 to 20 for like the last 12 minutes of the basketball game. And they're still just pumping it inside to Zach Eady for twos. Like, you guys got to come up with something else offensive if you're going to get back in this basketball game. Bring on the breeze. About a thousand times the broadcast team was like, yeah, you, know, you know, Purdue was wondering, you know, can you just win the game with twos? Can you win the game with twos? This just in, it's basketball in 2024. You cannot win the game with twos. They shot seven threes. UConn defended the three-point line extremely well. But Purdue only attempted seven threes. Did you honestly think... You were going to beat the best college basketball team that we've seen in the last 40 years by just pumping the ball inside to Zach Eady. That was the plan? What are you going to do? Have a and one every single time down the court? Hmm. Anyway, we had a minus six and a half for the lock shot play of the day. And it was, it, I mean, with about 15 minutes left in that game. Basically, early in the second half, you could tell Purdue had no answers. And that UConn team rolled to a national championship. Some of the stuff that UConn has done is just remarkable. I liked a few of these things on Twitter last night. Let me bring them up. Oh, I also locked this last night. Most seasons averaging 25 points, five rebounds, and five assists in NBA history. Kobe Bryant did it seven times. Michael Jordan did it eight times. Pretty good. Kevin Durant did it eight times. Oscar Robertson did it nine times. LeBron James has done it 20 times. How about that? Pretty good. Anyway, I like that. that. That was in my that was in my likes too. Uh, let me let me get let me get to what, exactly what I was looking for. Sometimes I get distracted by things. All right, so the biggest point differential in tournament history. They won every single game in the tournament by fourteen points or more. And here's their last twelve. They go back to back. The UConn men go back to back. Over those two tournaments, they won last night by 15 in the national championship game. 14-point win, 25-point win, 30-point win, 17-point win, 39-point win. Last year, they won the national championship game by 17 points. Also had a 13-point win, a 28-point win, a 23-point win, a 15-point win, and a 24-point win. So UConn has won back-to-back March Madness titles. And Eric, it hasn't even been close. Nobody's been able to keep it anything closer then Miami with the 13 points in last year's Final Four game. That's insane. 
absolutely insane. Husky Nation. So that's very well done. Very well done. If you want to uh, chime. Oh, there's a good one. Big Maple. Mixing it up. Purdue. More like Purboo. Uh, <laughs> man, I know it's lame. And I know if you're new to the show, you're going to be like, what the hell is this? <laughs> but that really works. That really works. That could probably get you in the mix. We, we've had worse text texts, of the day. winning texts of the day on oh, certain, yeah, for certain sure. shows and mornings. Come on. I mean, per boo is better than Purdue, more like per don't. <laughs> Bones is in and says, I knew he'd hurdle that lineup. It hurt. Well, yeah, lineup, we're, we're, that's, well uh, that's, that's the path today. You guys today, are on hey? your game today. Yeah. Tube socks, one macromel intro, and a bunch of these... Uh, let the games yeah, pretty begin. Much. That's <laughs> you know? pretty much what we're looking that's at the here, field here. <laughs> Yeah, Which horse you got? <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty good. Other people are trying to get in, but that's uh, that's pretty tough. Northside Sandwich is following up with his UConn, more like you win. How are we going to decide between UConn, you win, and Purdue, more like Purboo? That's going to be really tough to pull off. I don't know how you're going to top those two today. You have to construct a bracket type of system, yeah. That's that's, uh, that's exactly how uh, how it's going to have to work. Some of you already in chiming in on the uh, the Kings and uh, Oilers possible first round matchup. It's still out there. It's still out there. The Golden Knights are the Golden Knights going to finish in a wild card spot, and then everybody can go the defending champs from a wild card spot. What a run! What a run they're going to make. Yeah, like the Panthers, eh? Yeah, well, that's what everybody likes to uh, to tie it to, I guess. Well, yeah, look, you're in the dance, right? We I, we talk about this in Canadian football discussions. Just get in the, just get in the dance. You just have to get in the playoffs. That's all you need. That's all really all. The regular season is fine, and, and people come from far and wide to go to games and buy merchandise and make memories and take us through, you know, lack of sun during the winter. But it's all about the playoffs. And if you're in the playoffs, that's all that matters. And and now we're kind of playing up the string here. I mean, a lot of people texting in and nasty. Ch- the theme is, I wish I could go to sleep today and wake up on the 20th. I know. Or whatever date. I know. Because now, and again, you're right. I mean, winning a division, that's that's something to hang your hat on. But is it that important right now for this team where they're at? No. We all know what the, we all know what the, the big goal here is. So you just want to kind of just hit that fast forward a bit. What, skip like the 15 seconds? You know, when you just click it and it moves 15 seconds ahead of video? You know, just Just a bit. Purdue, more like per done. That comes there. from Nasty there. Kenny. Can we do something with the per? Yeah, is there something you could do with the do? <laughs> like the per, replace the per with yeah. the do. UConn, more like you can't get within 10 points. <laughs> yeah. ah, you know what? I'll throw it in the mix. I'll throw, I'll throw it in the yeah, mix. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Careful I don't the spelling. Know. I don't know where this is going to go, yeah. but uh, we'll, throw, we'll throw that one in the mix too. We'll see. Uh, all right, we got a sports update coming up here for Green Plan. And then on the other side, Evander Kane and Corey Perry. Brothers are going to fight, and brothers are going to squash the beef. So we're going to get into that. You can listen to it for yourselves. Make a Do we even, Why are we even talking about this? Can we, can we move it's, it's on? It's a non-factor. Sheesh. Non-factor. We'll hear what those guys had to say yesterday. Right now, let's get to a sports update with LTE for Green Plan. Vancouver Canucks topping the Golden Knights 4-3 last night. Leafs over the Penguins 3-2 in overtime as well in the only two games around the NHL. The Oilers now five points back of the Canucks with a pair of games in hand for tops in the Pacific. Oilers get set to host the Golden Knights tomorrow. 13 games around the NHL later tonight. Jose Barrios tossed six and two-thirds scoreless innings as the Jays victorious in their home opener with a 5-2 win over the Mariners. Game two of that three-game set goes tonight. First pitch 5-0-7. Chris Bassett scheduled to start. On the hard court, UConn are back-to-back champions as they outlast Purdue 75-60 in the men's March Madness final. Huskies are the first school since 2007 to capture back-to-back national championships. NBA action resumes tonight with 14 games, one of which will see the Raptors at home to the Pacers. Back over to hockey, United States defeating Canada 1-0 in overtime at the Women's World Hockey Championships. USA will top Group A with the win. Canada will get set to take on Sweden in a quarterfinal match on Thursday. Second round of the AJHL playoffs continue tonight. Canmore Eagles and Whitecourt Wolverines. Game 7. Back in Whitecourt, the winner will advance to face Calgary in the final. Sports update for Green Plan. 
Providing you with award-winning environmental planning and consulting services, whether it's municipal, industrial, or residential, plan it right with Green Plan. Visit green-plan.com or give them a call, 780-455-4292. Dude. Skin that smoke wagon and see what happens. How dude. That is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. I'm your huckleberry. You tell him I'm coming and hell's coming with me, you hear? Hell's coming with me! Take us higher. You can all take us higher by hammering that thumbs up over on the uh, the likes page on uh, YouTube. Hit that thumbs up. Not gonna hurt ya. Purdue, more like no can do. Comes in from Tom Dixon's mustache. Mm. We're trying. We're we're, uh, we're excavating here. I like this one. Yukon, more like you can do it all night long. Is that Rob Schneider? Right? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. Rob Schneider. Rob reference. Schneider. <laughs> okay, what is this Rob Schneider bit? Like what is that hit one of his things? Well, like, when he's uh, when he had his uh, appearance on South Park, uh, okay. and, and the deal was whenever they brought him up, it was Rob Schneider because he's always in these stupid movies where he's a stupid character and it's a stupid. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to show you the clip there if if you know, you know. All right, that makes uh, that makes sense. And he's gonna find out it ain't so great being eight. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, I want the Oilers to catch the Canucks for purely entertainment value. Yeah. The oil will be fine if they don't, but if they do, the bleep show out of Vancouver from their fan base will be pure gold. That comes in from the Edmontarian. I think we're all here for that. Hey, I mean, it's one of those things. It's a It would be kind of thing. funny it's- like if it was like the very last day of the season. Like if you're chasing the Sharks, who cares? In, in a different world. But it's yeah. the Canucks. It's the Vancouver it's- Canucks. They bare butt spanked you on opening night, and now here you are on the final night of the season. Sitting on the perch all year long. Yeah, them. yeah. If Vancouver goes 500 the rest of the way, the Oilers do have to go 5-1 and one to take down top spot in the division. Does it matter to you? Uh, 780-218-9999. All right, there was a lot of talk on yesterday's show about Corey Perry and Evander Kane uh, and Corey Perry getting very animated on the bench too much against talk. the Calgary Flames. Stri- stripping, taking too, or tearing a strip off of Vander Too much Kane. talk. It wasn't like that at all. There was no strips teared. It was, look. <laughs> Let's go Perry. Do we have Perry? Let's go Perry first. Uh, they... they Chatted with the media yesterday, and you know, just to make sure everything's uh, fine. And uh, Corey Perry chatted with them first, and uh, here's what Corey Perry had to say yesterday. You appearing to be animated regarding something during the game on Calgary, possibly with Evander. Can you tell us what was going on there? Brothers fight. It's uh, just trying to bring out the best in everybody. Um, you know, it's you know, we weren't playing our best hockey, and uh, you know, just frustration and uh, emotions boil over. That's all. How often would uh, conversations like that happen and maybe the cameras don't catch? Or, you know, cause it did look like it was reasonably heated, but that isn't necessarily that uncommon. It's not uncommon. I mean, you come in here, you probably you, you probably see uh, a little bit more, but um, cameras caught it and we moved on. We talked about it, apologized, and that's it. How much is it about sort of holding each other accountable, making sure that everybody's ready to go? I mean, I know veteran players help the younger guys make sure they're ready to go, but veterans on veterans as well, making sure. That's what makes a team work, right? That's how you win. I mean, you hold everybody accountable. You push everybody's buttons. You do whatever you have to do to to get the best out of everybody. And, um, you know, just at that point, it was something him and I had. And, um, you know, but it could be anybody. And uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter, you know, who it is is um, you're just trying to you're just trying to be better and win in each game. Why is it more important for that stuff to come out maybe now than even in no- November or October where you know stuff's getting real now, right? Stuff is getting real. Um, you know, we, we have what six games left, whatever it is, and five games, whatever. I, I'm, you know, we take it uh, e- going forward. You're gonna have to get better, and it's emotions are gonna get 
get higher and intensity is going to get higher and anxiety levels are going to get higher as, as we move along here. And um, it's it's how you how you manage those. Corey Connor talked about the, the year Duncan Keith was here and how he, he really helped a lot just because he had so much experience and being through a lot of stuff that those guys hadn't. Now, mm -hmm. they haven't been to a cup final or anything like that and only been to one conference final. But do you feel the need to to show that more considering how much experience you've gone through and how many times you've been to the cup finals and won cups? Um, I don't I don't know, maybe, maybe certain points uh, it might come out and something, you know, if it needs to be said, whatever. But, uh, you know, there's, you look around here, there's a lot of experience in here. I mean, like you just said, they've gone to the conference final. They've, you know, they've had big moments on, on big stages. And um, it's just that next hero we're, we got to get over, and uh, and that's what we're working towards. Corey, what was Evander's reaction like? I'm not going to get into it. So, Corey, when mistakes are made late in the season, you want to nip them in the bud so that if you make the same mistake in the playoffs, that's when you really get burned? Is that how well, you have think? to, yeah. <laughs> in the playoffs, everything's under a microscope. And it's... You lose a 3 2 game because you make mistakes. Exactly. It's, um, and, I, you know, that 3 2 game could be in game seven. So, you know, and all of a sudden your season's over. Um, so, you eliminate those now and you push forward and um, you. You try to get those out of your game and, and try to find that right way to play. And, uh, you know, I think as of late, we've been doing a pretty good job. All right, there you go. That is Corey Perry yesterday uh, starting his uh, conversation with the media with uh, Brothers Fight. I don't have a brother, so I had to fight my sisters. But, uh, Eric, you had a brother. How often did you and your brother fight growing up? Um... How often? Like, like, you guys, you guys get along real. Have you guys ever gone to like a 60? full? Have you ever got into a full blown legitimate scrap with your bro? Yeah, we were drunk. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. That happened. I mean, that yeah. happens. But sober, you never fought your brother no, straight up. No, no, I no. wouldn't. I love him too much. Oh, <laughs> brothers love each other. I wish Perry would have said that to start as a. Also, I still, I, I still doesn't like when you saw him sit there <clears throat> looking at the Calgary Flames at the bench after, and he's just like, "You're so bad." You're so bad, he was saying to the Flames. Um, and then you watched him yesterday. Anytime I see him still in Oilers stuff, I'm like, man, this is weird. People used to absolutely despise Corey Perry in this city. And now he's become a fan favorite. It's a wild twist. Well, it's his ship. He's the captain now almost. Like, it, 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 the way he's talking. And he is the vet. And I think McDavid yeah. and Dreisaitl would, would you know, defer to that. But Well, it's an important voice. Like, it Corey is a bit Perry, of a twist. Yeah, Corey <laughs> Perry has done stuff that nobody else in this room has done. Yeah. Like, Corey Perry's opinion significantly matters. And I would assume, even though he hasn't been there for a long time, his voice probably carries some oomph in that dressing room. And I think it was kind of a, uh, like, I don't know, the, the second coming of a Duncan Keith type of thing in that that type of role, having that, that vet guy that's been around. That's done it. Done He's it, won pretty much there. everything yeah, yeah. that you can win. Uh, all right, Evander Kane on the other side of this. He chatted with the media after uh, Corey Perry yesterday and uh, Evander Kane, uh, well, Evander Kane's going to Evander Kane. It's, it's it. He's, it, I, I chuckled watching this yesterday. I thought it was pretty entertaining. Here's Evander Kane. <laughs> I mean, they're fine. They're fine. We're, uh, we're uh, partners in the Masters pool tomorrow. So there you go. Oh, who you like? Tiger. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. You have an underdog now. It's so, I mean, Root against Tiger, you don't like golf. Cameras catch something like that. Uh, obviously, it's going to get some attention, but I mean, how, how often do maybe things like that happen behind the scenes that we don't see, and it's just things that a team goes through that this one was a little bit more public? I mean, everything's public when you play in Canada, right? Um, conversations and frustrations happen all the time. I mean... You know, I think the world we live in, everybody's very sensitive and, and safe and, and um, soft, for lack of a better term. So I think when guys, two veteran guys specifically, uh, um, show a little emotion, people are uh, uncomfortable. But uh, I think with me and me and him, we're the least uncomfortable in those situations. So um, I don't know what he said, but, uh, you know. I think it, it helped our team. We had a great third period. He said brothers fight, that you talked it out and each apologized and you're good. Yeah, I mean, um, I think, uh, like I said, it was uh, the heat of the moment. Um, cameras are always looking uh, at me specifically um, these days, and uh, I guess I, I have to enjoy it.
Okay, you open that can of worms. I'll just ask you. It's been a couple of times that you know the cameras have shown this sort of thing. Yeah, I know you've talked about it on your podcast and, and whatnot. And people look for it for clicks and and um, storylines. And like I said, I think at the end of the day, I got to start getting paid for some of these clicks and storylines. So uh, whenever you guys want to present me with a check, I'd be more than happy to accept it. So how how quickly does that get patched over? Or as you were saying, is it so? maybe more common than we realize that you don't even even need to, to say anything. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it depends. I mean, I think it's pretty common um, for the most part. You know, guys have conversations, whether it's in the room, whether it's on the bench, uh, whether it's a practice or whatnot. Um, but it's literally when it's over, it's over. You know, we move on and, uh, you know, get ready for the next play and the next shift. All right, there you go. That was Evander Kane from yesterday. I got a lot of respect for Kane basically going to yeah. Shoggy. I want to get a check for some of these clicks when you talk about me on, uh, on Got Your Back. I, uh, I mean, it's probably not going to happen, but it never hurts to ask. Never hurts to ask. You want to throw me a few bucks? Providing you with some content to talk about? Ask Why your not? permission first before asking for forgiveness uh, yeah. later. Yeah, He's not going to steal exactly. money from Ryan and, and say, hey. Uh. All right, so there we go. That's Evander Kane. That's Corey Perry from yesterday and uh yeah you can uh, feel free to chime in on that if you want i um, say we stop this well i th- th- this is the thing we don't have to talk about this anymore i i don't think we have to talk about it anymore like whether we're joking or we're not joking i'm done this this is this is now in the past unless something occurs again in the future then you would reference this and you would reference the uh the dry side all uh, no, thing no, as well no 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 i told you off the air I'm suspect it even happened. <laughs> Prove me wrong. <laughs> Eric, I, Eric can't even remember this. I, I, maybe a psyop. Mm-hmm. That, that yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that uh, movie I t- or that show I talked about where uh, everybody's AI'd in uh, or they and they steal the guy's uh, a capture, capture on Prime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, this uh, is the whole thing here. Maybe that's what Real it's. Life. Uh, maybe that's what it's like. Uh, all right, so there you go. That's Kane and uh, Perry yesterday and. Uh, you know, I wonder what it's like being Ryan McLeod centering them. <laughs> Ryan McLeod's just like, he's probably the perfect guy to play the middleman on the on this one. I actually like the line. I like the line. I think it's something that uh, they could probably stick with. It was suggested to us on Oil Stream yesterday. Hey, if you're watching on YouTube today, hammer the thumbs up. If you're listening on iHeart or you're listening on TuneIn or you're listening at EdmontonSportsTalk.com, tell your friends about what we're doing here with EST and uh, how easy it is to just download TuneIn or iHeart and listen for free, crystal clear over there. I brought up yesterday uh, the thought of playing Henrique with McLeod and Fogel and putting Nuge between Kane and Perry. And I don't I don't think we've seen a Nuge Kane and Perry line. And I'm not sure we need to, but I'm kind of intrigued by it. Well, you got a little you got a little time here. Why not have a little look see? Like come hey. come playoff time, full blown veteran second line. And I think that's how you'd view it. And then Henrique could center McLeod and Fogel with a lot of speed on the wings for Adam Henrique. Um have not really seen that Nuge Perry Kane look. We're getting down, you know, to the final few games of the regular season. So I would guess at some point, Knobloch kind of starts to to lock these things in. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, I I I'd be kind of intrigued to see Nuge with Perry and Kane. Mind you, I do like McLeod's speed in between those two guys. Uh, and obviously on Friday. Friday, it, uh, it looked pretty good. I, uh, I, 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 I really hope. And I know Rashog's got a humor bone, various humor bones, but show up with a big novelty check. Oh, man. I mean, just come on, man, do it. We'd all, Kane's got a sense of humor. It would kind of smooth it, like, eh, kind of. <laughs> big novelty check. A couple of balloons. Parker could be holding them. That would be, uh, that would be pretty hilarious, I actually. It. I, uh, I think that'd be I think that'd be pretty funny. A couple bucks, you know. I'm sure you could. <laughs> Huge. Uh, that's uh, that's too good. I, I like the fact. Like I I know Kane and Shoggy had some talks about something that was said on Shogger's podcast a while back, and in fact, like Kane still kind of digging it into him. I, he, hope he Shog- I, hope, I hope Shoggy's having a good time. I hope Shoggy's having a good time. I'm over for the mass. Have him yeah. in the simulator, you know? I mean, Sh- Shoggy doesn't care. Do Shoggy's on that simulator right now. 
right now getting ready for the Masters. So you don't have to worry about the birds that. are chirping. Yeah. Air is crisp. No, that's what they say. No skin off his sack. <laughs> that's uh that's what they say there. 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. Troy's in and says, "Don't make me Chris. Don't make me get Chris Jones to tell you we don't talk about the past." Yeah, that was awesome. This is another move I kind of respect after the after the fact when we have Chris Jones on to recap the season. To recap the season, <laughs> and he goes, "I'm not talking about anything that happened during the season." <laughs> I was like, "What? What are we doing here? We brought you on to recap the season." I blame the media. It has to be the case. Has to be the case. McBain is in. It says Kane and Perry having a good effect on McLeod. McLeod is playing more physical. He would add, but I still like McLeod on the wing. I I would agree. I also like McLeod more on the wing than I than I do down the middle. Which is why you could see you know some level of intriguement. Is in, intriguement a word? Mm. I think it is now. Anyway, you can see some level of intriguement by uh, by having McLeod on the wing. With Henrik and Fogel as your third line, Nuge between Kane and Perry as your uh, I like that Nuge Kane and Perry uh, idea. Yeah, yeah, get yeah, it going. Yeah, a bit. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Right, We've we seen everything else. Let's just see that too. Let's just see that too. This is the time. Seven eight. Also, if I could please get the invite to the Oilers Masters Pool. If they're going after Tiger Woods, well, they want to. Yeah, they want a fair shot. They Imagine having you the first and overall pick in a Masters pool, and Evander Kane and Corey Perry are arguing over who to take. Somebody uh, just asked straight up who'd win in a fight. You, oh man, just a hypothetical. You know, I'd be a great tilt. Yeah, it would be a great tilt. Like, find, let's find a parking yeah. garage. You it know, really fight would. club it out, and that'd be a, that'd be a real nice fight. Uh, Tiger, by all accounts, had a pretty nice nine yesterday. Oh boy, yeah. I think Willie Zalatoris was saying he hasn't seen him golf that good in a oh, long time. Oh, we're so, doing it now, so are here's we? Here's what we're, happens. Uh, yeah. uh, Tiger hype for a little bit. Yeah, then, and then, then Thursday or Friday. Friday. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hope I hope that doesn't happen. I'd love to see Tiger in the mix one more time on Sunday, just from a nostalgic perspective. Here for the story, yeah. Look, it's, man, it's the same thing as when Undertaker's music hits at WrestleMania. You're like, by God, Tiger's back. Uh, which would be a lot of I fun. I think Undertaker could probably take Augusta right now more than, you know what I mean? Like we'll, I, have to, <laughs> we'll have to see. But apparently he put together a nice little practice round yesterday. So something to keep in mind. Something to keep in mind. Uh, all right. Yesterday we talked about it uh, in the 8 o'clock hour. Some of you might have missed it if you're a 6 o'clocker and only a 6 o'clocker. If you're listening or watching or whatever, you might have missed it yesterday. But we are teaming up with Strathcona Spirits. The 6 o'clocker logger with Alley Cat has been just a massive, massive success. It, uh, it has become one of their best-selling beers. People are loving it. We haven't even really got to the like, key prime beer drinking season yet, so it's going to continue to go through the roof. We're not messing around when we tell you the 6 o'clock or lager is an absolutely delicious beer. So if you've not yet tried it, try it, uh, and try any of the great products that they've got over at Alley Cat as well. The fact that the 6 o'clock or lager is selling so well when they're also rolling out like Apricot and Mangalorian and some of the stuff they've got over there, it's, it's really exciting for us. So that's good. So we thought, well, how can we get more booze around here? And uh, Strathcone and Spirit stepped up to the table, and we're, we're, we're putting together what will be known as the EST Birdie Juice. That's going to be the official name, the EST Birdie Juice. Uh, right now, the plan is to distribute it only in Mickey's. Plastic. Only in Mickey's, plastic Mickey's, and we need a label. So coming up here in this 7 o'clock hour, I'm going to tweet out a template for the label. It's not a big label. Probably won't be a ton of work, but get creative, and your label could be on the EST Birdie Juice. Had Big Maple yesterday take a run at it via AI, which if that's something that you want well, to path, you want to go down, that's fine. He sent one in the Paris Jewelers inbox. He also DM'd me one. Did he DM you the other one too? No. No. It's uh, like it's, man. Does it look good? Well, but it's AI again. But damn this AI. Oh, like man. I, I just let me see. Let me see that again. You're right. I mean, it's it, look. It's a Damn birdie. It. It's got a little no, juice. No, but that it's looks a, good. I know. That looks real I nice. I know. I know. My God. So, and then now this is this is going to be a like a shootable beverage, uh, being made with a, a hybrid fruit. That will have more details on. Uh, yeah, locally uh, sourced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and it's going to be blue. That was our, that was like my one request. 
said, what do you want? I said, well, we want something blue. Our colors are blue. This is going to be, and you haven't seen Slammin' Salmon yet, hey? No. One of the waiters keeps drinking, like, blue Curacao the whole night, and he's wasted. And it's, so, by, it's I mean, all, you're yeah. going to know, uh, we're going to know who's on the birdie juice, I guess, this summer. And, and by how much, <laughs> judging by the lips and the tongue. Yeah, you're going to be able to tell. It's going to be a lot of fun. Have you been drinking birdie juice? No. <laughs> <laughs> just a just a god awful mess. Uh, so the ESC Birdie Juice, it is coming. If you want to design, if look, maybe you're an artist. Uh, maybe you just want to kind of take a run at this thing. We had so many good suggestions and options for the uh, six o'clock or beer label. It was great. Um, this one, you know, it doesn't have to be major. It's not going all the way around a can. It's just kind of going on the front of a Mickey. So. What do you see? Get like creative. A, do you see like a professional look, like a coat of arms, or more of like a cartoony type well, I don't, of? A, I don't mind that super little bird. I know, I mean, I yeah, think yeah. That kind of works. I like the idea of a bird with the birdie juice. Uh, I also kind of imagined like the, the our crew is caricatures. Oh yeah, from like Caddyshack almost. Yeah. On there, but I, I mean, I definitely can't put that together. <laughs> but I don't hate that idea either. Like, we got the the five of us on there. Trev's like, oh, five of us? Trev, you work here, man. It's uh, you you are officially employed by us. So uh, I appreciate that. That would be, uh, you'd be smaller. The smaller, a little, smaller right corner. Little YouTube Trev head down in the, <laughs> in the corner. Um, but, yeah, I, I might, uh, but Big Maple's had some good ideas pop up on this AI machine, so. You plug it in and it spits out a, a yeah. result, right? It's quite the scene, man. Now, <laughs> the best part about it being uh, just a Mickey is that you can sneak it places. <laughs> right? Like that, that's, that has to be the key here. Yeah, the waistband's going to be getting a... <laughs> do you remember sneaking... Like, do you remember oh, one yeah. good time sneaking a Mickey in somewhere? Or? Yeah, I mean... It's what you did at Rough Rider Games, man. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely at Rough Rider Why would you pay Games. top dollar for... Uh, no, I mean it's it's and, and look if you have a nice little flask as some people do right you can you can fill up the uh, the birdie juice in the flask and go about your day. I'm excited for this. The plastic bottle gives off a uh, a sense of I mean it's it's an upscale cheapness in in a, in a way like, exactly. You know, I, I, I'm not trying to to yeah I think you know where I'm coming from here but uh, yeah the blue with the plastic and the I I roll on summer that that plus a six o'clock or longer you kidding me yeah. It's uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep you lubricated through the summer months, and we want ESC Birdie Juice to become a staple in your golf bag, obviously, but also a little staple around the house. If you just oh, you want to have a want to have a little Birdie Juice with me? Yeah, sure. Let's uh, let's do it. Chirp, 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 chirp indeed. Chirp, yeah, chirp, yeah. Chirp, yeah. chirp, 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 chirp. <laughs> Pick up your ESC Birdie Juice today. Chirp, 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 chirp. That'd be pretty good. Uh, Bob Loblaw in Lloyd says, Trev is like the rabbit on the pill label. Not even. The black elk, if you know. No, I was going to say he's like the, uh, on the kokanee, on the kokanee bottle, in the kokanee can, he's the Sasquatch in the mountains. The, the, the find, we should almost do, this should be some sort of a. Uh, find YouTube Trev on the yeah, logo. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty good. Guys, I missed the birdie juice announcement yesterday. Exciting. Is there flavor to it? Yeah, it'll be a flavored vodka. <laughs> it tastes like water. It'll be a flavored vodka. <laughs> or no flavor, just straight vodka. Yeah, yeah, yeah blue it, coloring and vodka. What we're doing, actually, is we're just buying uh, bottles of Grey Goose, <laughs> opening up Mickey's and pouring it in, and then being like, check it out, it's the birdie juice. Zach Tim's mixing it up in the uh, yeah. communal bathtub over here. He's just getting it ready to go. Uh, so, yeah, no, there will be flavor to it. And uh, we're going to have a test run of it either this week or early next week. Uh, and think we're gonna have a couple of different options, and then we can decide which one we want to roll with. So, yeah, uh, Dex, gonna, be, Dex gonna says, be out in early May. Guilty pleasure from Dex. I personally love things with a tinge of Trailer Park, and that's kind of it's it's, it's a highbrow with with it just a I, touch. I th I think EST Birdie Juice at the launch only being available in Mickey's is the only way we could really okay. do that. Buy your box today. Yeah, you right? want us to. You want us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the thing, guys. I'm going to. It's like going to Wayne's and picking up a case. You're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go pick up a case of the uh, EST Birdie Juice. So that's uh, that's a good one, guys. A Mickey with a one ounce cap, so you can always have an exact shot. Us. Yeah, we just go like this. Yeah, drink the whole bloody eyeballing thing. it is always the best. Yeah. Way. So it should be a lot of fun. We're uh, we're looking forward to that. And if you want to take a run at, I will tweet out the uh, the link so you can download the uh, the template. Have a couple of weeks to kind of get this label, and then we'll pick a label, and then we will. Uh, 
We'll get the birdie juice out in May. I'm. Uh, it's going to make me golf more. This is legit going to make me golf more. I'll be like, well, so now when Tam goes, you're going golfing? It's for work. What it's about, for work. I'm promoting the birdie juice. When is all this juice going to get drunk? Holy smokes. So, yeah, if you are excited for that. Someone wants a character of Tommy chasing after a beer cart girl. On <laughs> like, the, uh, like running behind yeah. the, the cart. It's, it's only a Mickey up. here, but yeah, we can. So I tried to, I tried to, de- well, maybe I'll save it for confessions. I'll say, yeah, you know what? That is going to be my confession today. We'll just, uh, we'll leave it at that. I have a nasty confession. I picked up a bad habit. Oh, no. Yeah, are you for, chewing your nails? Bad for my health. No, even worse. Oh. What? Yeah. I chew my nails. It's not good. It's not good. I've been doing it for years. Years. My kids don't, though. So I, I, is this like smoking where less people chew their nails in 2024 than back in the day? Well, I don't think there's any health hazard for it. Like a, well, it depends. Rather, like it's, you, you're not swallowing your nails, are you? Like, do you eat them? Like, do you, no, I chew no. them and spit them up. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I'm not. Yeah, you're I'm right. I'm not eating them. them yeah. <laughs> Guys, I live in a trailer park up here in Grand Prairie. Can I buy tickets of juice and set it up on a stand in my driveway? EST Birdie Juice at a stand in his driveway. That'd be great too. It's a great <laughs> idea. I will tell you what. When we have the uh, the golf tournament. ESD Birdie Juice is going to have a significant role. Significant role. Don't tell the Dr. The, uh, Doom lady. In the golf, in the golf tournament. <laughs> uh, all right, we do have Craig Button coming up. Button's going to be by uh, just after 7 o'clock this morning. We'll get into it a little bit with Craig. It was interesting. I threw it out last night on Twitter, and the response on Twitter is a little bit different than we've seen on the air here at Edmonton Sports Talk. Is it important for the Edmonton Oilers to finish first in the division? I mean, the, 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 yes, you'd have second. You'd have home ice in the second round of the playoffs. I said last week, no. You're not going to have home ice in the conference final. You're not going to catch the Dallas Stars. So, I don't. I don't know. I mean, you stay where you are today. You get the Los Angeles Kings in the first round. Uh, you move up. Maybe you get the Nashville Predators unless Vegas catches Nashville and Nashville slides down and the Nashville's going to Dallas. So, I, I don't think it's the end of the world. Like I'm not sitting here. At the beginning of the playoffs, and my playoff prediction for the Oilers will not be any different whether they finish first or second. Nashville, Golden Knights, or the Kings, though? Who 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 would be a first-round opponent that you would say, okay, that's the one I want to, if any, maybe well, there's I would, no I would want to face the Kings first. Okay. Nashville second. Okay. And uh, Nashville second, and then Vegas would be the third choice. Anyway, how much do you think it matters? 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. Bill is in and says, it's bad if you chew someone else's nails. Slightly related. Feet are gross. <laughs> All right, Bill. Thanks for that. Thanks for passing that along. Craig Button's coming up. Just I want to get Craig's thoughts on this DuPont kid, too. I was going to, oh, yes. Ex- stole my, uh, exceptional status. Yes. First defenseman of the As WHL. a defenseman. And he played U18 this year at the age of 14. He looks like he's 25. And just lit it up. <laughs> lit up U18 as a 14-year-old looks defenseman. Like so we're going to get into that with uh, Craig Button coming up here just after 7 o'clock as well. The only bad part about this kid is he's from Calgary. Am I right? Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah right? That's a funny joke to make about a uh, city that's a rival to Edmonton. That's why I make that, make that joke. Let's get to a sports update here for Century Casino with Lieutenant Eric. Craig Button on the other side for Pro-Am Sports. Oilers now five points back of the Canucks with a pair of games in hand for tops in the Pacific following last night's 4-3 Vancouver win over the visiting Golden Knights. Golden Knights are in town tomorrow to take on the Oilers. Just one other game last night. Austin Matthews recording his 65th goal of the campaign. Leafs taking an overtime 3-2 over the Penguins. 13 games got the NHL schedule later tonight. Jays victorious in them, their home opener yesterday, 5-2 for the Mariners. Game 2 of that three-game set goes tonight. First pitch, 5-0-7. Chris Bassett scheduled to start for Toronto. UConn are back-to-back champions. They outlast Purdue 75-60 at the Men's March Madness Final. Huskies, first school since 07 to capture back-to-back national championships. The NBA returns to action tonight with 14 games, one of which will see the Raptors at home to the Pacers. Back over to hockey, USA defeating Canada 1-0 in overtime at the Women's Worlds yesterday. USA will top Group A with the win, while Canada will get set to face Sweden in quarterfinal action Thursday. 
The second round of the AJHL playoffs continues tonight. Game seven from White Court between the Wolverines and Canmore Eagles. The winner will advance to take on Calgary in the finals. Sports update brought to you by the Sports Bar and Lounge at Central Casino Fort Road. Your home for the Oilers push to the postseason. Catch all the action at the Central Casino Sports Bar and Lounge. The Nielsen Show featuring Lieutenant Eric. Only on Edmonton Sports Talk. on a Tuesday. How lewd. Tombstone Tuesday. You can uh, chime in over there as well. We are coming at you from the Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen Studio where they have dropped the buffalo chicken wrap that you got to try right now. Also a buffalo poutine available at Popeye's. It's, these guys just keep changing the game. They keep changing the chicken game, which is not easy to do considering how long chicken has been consumed for. Imagine the first person that ever ate a chicken. They're like, holy hell. We're going to have to eat all these things because they're just delicious. Yep. Uh, Popeye's is absolutely delicious, as is. Uh, and send us your reviews of the uh, the Buffalo Chicken Wrap, now available at all of your Popeye's locations. More of your text messages rolling in here on the pursuit of the Vancouver Canucks atop the division. We'll get to a few more of those. Cool bet hotline of the day coming up. Busy night in the National Hockey League. Weekly confessions for Spectrum Rental around 7.30 today. Keyword for the EST, fly away to Vegas in 42 minutes. Your chance to qualify for a trip to Vegas with Edmonton Sports Talk. That'll be at 7.45 today. And I says pardon, still to come before 8 o'clock this morning. Let's get to this text before we bring in uh, Craig Button. We were asking you earlier how important you think it is for the Edmonton Oilers to track down the Vancouver Canucks and finish first in the division. Hey, guys, it's Rob. I would like them to finish first just to screw with the Vancouver fans, but I don't think it's as important as some people might think it is, to be honest. And uh, Taco is in this morning. He says, I'm not worried about first place, but the games against Vegas and Van are must-wins for the Oilers' psyche, especially the game against Vancouver. I don't like, I don't like the idea of losing to either team heading in to the playoffs. Wednesday, Saturday, big games against the Golden Knights and the Vancouver Canucks, who did play each other last night in Vancouver, and the Canucks coming out on top 4-3. Brock Besser with his 40th of the season in that game, you can continue to chime in in the Parachutes inbox at 780-218-9999, 780-218-9999. Craig Button and our Hockey Insiders all season long brought to you by our partners over at Pro-Am Sports. Visit them at proamsports.ca. Playoffs just around the corner. Going to be a busy time for the crew over at Pro-Am. They got the car flags that you're looking for when it's time to show that playoff spirit. And they got private signings right now over on the website. Mike Kershelniski and Ron Lowe. Deadlines for those April 20th and May 4th. Let's bring in Craig Button this morning. Mr. Button, good morning. How are you doing on this wonderful Tuesday, sir? Yeah, I'm doing great. It's a wonderful Tuesday. And all the snow has melted down here. So I'm you guys had a that. pretty big dump, didn't you? Yes, we did. And it was one of those ones that I got one of those big uh, blowers. You know, when you get the light snow, you just go out and blow the snow away. This was that heavy snow. You got to get in there. You got to use some uh, shovel and some back strength. <laughs> that's the last thing you want to use do, the right? legs. Use the yeah, legs. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Approach it that oh, way. Good job. I warmed up too. I went out there and I did my warm up. <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Very smart. Yeah. People know. Go. Oh, Craig's going to be shoveling in twenty five minutes. <laughs> hey, you got to get that warm up in. That's that's very important. <laughs> hey, last night in the National Hockey League, Canucks and Golden Knights. Oilers are going to see both of these teams this upcoming week. Obviously, both possible playoff opponents somewhere along the way. Uh, that's a nice win for Vancouver last night against Vegas. Got Hurdle back in the lineup, and the Canucks still found a way. Well, they fell behind two nothing, and they fell be once they tied it up. They fell behind three two. So for them to find a way to to emerge victorious, and you know, they played a really good game. I thought. I don't know how you guys feel. So last Friday night, 
I thought that was a really good, important game for Edmonton. And they waxed Colorado. It wasn't yeah. even a, like, I mean, in a game that you're anticipating, I mean, on the, if you're an Oilers fan, you're going, well, yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah, right on. We're winning, we're winning 16 straight come playoff time if you watch that game. But if you're what if you're just tuning in to watch the game and you're just, I mean, Colorado just got uh, uh, obliterated. And so when you guys were talking about the next games against Vancouver and Vegas, I think they are important. But to that end, what I wanted to say was, I'm not buying Vegas. Everybody keeps telling me Vegas, 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 Vegas. If they didn't have the start that they have, they've been a 500 team since their great start. And and, and a 500 teams don't win in the playoffs. I'm sorry. They they don't even make the playoffs. I, 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 am, I am off the Vegas bandwagon. I am not, oh, yeah, well, they won the cup. Oh, they have hurdle. Oh, they have this. You have to play the game. And you have to play the game with a certain purpose and, and, and when we use the term the right way. They're not playing it the right way, and I'm not buying them. So for the Oilers, go and beat them. Go and beat Vancouver. That, those are the statements you want to make, not just to not just to those teams, but to yourselves. We're taking on all comers. Let's go. You're so right about Vegas. I mean, they had a terrific start to the season, but since then, they've been they've been pretty mad. They've had a decent stretch well, here over the last 10, 11, 12. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, is it wrong to give the defending Stanley Cup champions too much credit, Craig? It is a new season, right? I don't, I don't know if it's wrong, but when you have almost 80 games of evidence, I, I think it's wrong to just blindly keep saying, oh, yeah, well, they're a favorite. I don't see it. I don't see it. I, I think they're a sloppy team. And, slop, and I know Bruce Cassidy's talked about it. And, and, and I don't believe in this idea of flip a switch. I don't, yeah, I know they've been there. So what? There's a lot of teams that have been there. You don't just flip the switch. I'm not buying them. I'm not, I'm, it's, it's my declaration on this April 9th. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Mark it down. April 9th, Craig Button is out on the Vegas uh, on the Vegas Golden Knights. And then he froze right when uh, that was the, he will reconnect. Yeah, that's, that's Vegas now. Maybe he's on the, they put him on LTIR yeah, retroactive I, to something. He's been retroactively <laughs> yeah. active, added to the LTIR. Well, that's a strong statement, though. I, I, not buying it. No, I, but I, I think you can back it up with the fact can, that they, yeah. they, they, you know, six, three, and one in their last 10. Yeah. But after a great start to the season, there hasn't been anything special. But do you not get a little bit of that Florida things. Panther vibe as well, maybe with that? I know they're not exactly the same teams or anything such as that, but from last year, you're kind of waiting around and then, then the playoffs no, I start. I, I think know. it's no? different. Okay. I think they could be a little fat and happy. Anyway, yep. Craig's back. Let's bring, let's bring Craig back in. Craig, you mentioned, you know, okay, so if, if Vegas doesn't scare you, you know, they got the Vancouver Canucks up here. We always sit here in Edmonton and go, ah, look at Colorado and look at Dallas. But how, st like, what would be the level of intimidation other teams have about the Oilers right now, considering they've lost the last two Stanley Cup champions, given them good tests along the way? How worried should the rest of the Western Conference be about the Oil? Hey, listen, I think very worried. I, I think if you're going to play against them. And, 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 you know, the easy answer is, well, they have 97, they have 29. Yeah, well, th that's the easy answer. We all, th there's always going to be a little trepidation or even a lot of trepidation when you're going up against McDavid and Dreisaitl, and, and, and as it should be. But it, it's the way they play. It's, it, it, it's the defensive play. It's, it, it's the way they've been committed. And, and, and when they've slipped from that commitment, they've struggled. But th th we talk about a big, big sample size. The Edmonton always have a big sample size of, of, of being able to play, this is the way we're going to have success we're gonna, since Chris Knobloch took over. You know, I, I saw a graphic the other night, I, I, and I, 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 it was old, the Edmonton Oilers record against teams top five in the league, top ten in the league. Let me just, of the seven teams in the playoffs in the Western Conference, now the Oilers have played, them, played those seven teams 13 times. They're 9-3-1. and one. They're 9-3-1 and one against the seven playoff teams in the West right now. I don't think there's any reason for concern. I, you know, again, like, yeah, if you include the first 13 games of the season for the Oilers, it's not going to look pretty. It's not going to look pretty no, because it wasn't pretty. But when you start to look at it a little deeper after Chris Knobloch took over, the, this team has played tremendously well. And I, I also think that, you know, what Chris has done in finding a rhythm with his group, finding players to play in different situations. And I'm going to say it right now. If Darnell Nurse can get his game to a consistent level where it's higher, the Oilers are going to be even a harder out. Right now, he's got to find a semblance of order in his game. I think he, I, I would call him disorderly in his game. There's a, it, it, It's too up and down. It's too in and out. Can't have that. 
the beautiful news is, is Matias Ekholm, oh. boy, has he been a beast on that blue line. TSN's Craig Button with us on the Nielsen Show this morning. Uh, Craig, I just wanted to get your thoughts on perhaps, and I say this perhaps, is the forgotten team in the West, and that's the Nashville Predators. We are so blinded here in this market with the Pacific Kings this, Golden Knights that, chasing the Canucks. The Nashville Predators went on that run, uh, dropped some points to the Coyotes. Like, what are the Preds, Craig? And when it comes to Oilers and potential first-round matchups, I, I wouldn't mind the Oilers drawing the Preds in that card. Are, 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 they, are they talked about as much out east, out, out anywhere? I mean, I know, again, in this market, we're so focused on the Kings and the Golden Knights, and I just wonder how dangerous are the Preds just sticking around there and then popping off on extended point streaks. Well, I'm going to jump on your comment that said that like you wouldn't mind them facing the, uh, the Preds, and I'm going to tell all the listeners and viewers that's only because you get to travel to Nashville. If they, if they <laughs> yeah, play that's a good point. <laughs> I hope so. You're, you're, that would be great. You're so transparent, Eric. Like, <laughs> better than Vegas. Better than Vegas. Nashville. I'll say that on record. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, Nashville's a hard out. Nashville plays hard. I'm going to do the game tonight with uh, with the Winnipeg Jets and, and the Predators. And Kevin Sore and I were talking about this. Kevin does the color commentary for the Jets games. And we were talking about this. The addition of Ryan McDonough and Ryan O'Reilly has changed the mindset of that team. Those two guys have set a standard. Yeah, they had Yossi. Yeah, they had UC Soros. Yes, they had Philip Forza. Yeah, they, they, they have lots of others. But the mindset of that team that says, we're taking anybody on, we're here to win, we're here to play, has been set by Ryan McDonough and Ryan O'Reilly. Those two, and give Barry Trotz a tremendous amount of credit for recognizing what they needed. I mean, Johansson out, Duchesne out. You know, Duchesne, Duchesne is playing well in, in, in Dallas. He, he's protected there. He, they don't have to count on Matt Duchesne. That's the best situation for Matt Duchesne to be in. It's not that he's not a good player, but you can't have him as a frontline player. Barry Trotz has done a fantastic job in changing the mindset there. Those two guys are instrumental. And when you have a goaltender of Youth Soros' caliber, th- th- that, th- that, should, th- that lets you know right away this is not going to be easy. And certainly the Nashville Predators have found a level of play in their game. And, and, and they run right through. They run deep through their lineup in terms of hard, really purposeful play. An important point last night for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Do you like Sidney Crosby and the Pens better than those other teams racing for the wild card spot in the East? Yes, and I'll tell you why. Because at this point in the year, to me, it's about who, who's winning. It's, it's not about who has won. You, the Washington Capitals, the Philadelphia Flyers, and the uh, uh, and the Detroit Red Wings. I mean, the reason the Penguins and the and, and the Islanders are in it is because those teams ha- had a free fall. I mean, th- they should be doing the high dive that Red Bull does. Like th- that's what kind of <laughs> dive they've had, you know. In, the, in in terms of so it opened up the door for the Penguins and the Islanders. Well, you still have to go and win. So I like the fact that the Penguins and the Islanders are showing that they can win. I, I, and, and that's where I'm putting my chips. I'm putting my chips on the Penguins and the Islanders because those other three teams, I mean, I, I think the Peng, uh, the the Flyers are 0-5 and 2 in their last, or 0-5 and 1 in their last six. And yeah. the, uh, the Caps are 0-4 and 2. I mean, that's not the way you need to be playing. I mean, the, the Red Wings are 2-3 two, and 2, I think, in their last seven. That's not the way to be playing. So... I'm going with Penguins and Islanders to make the playoffs there. Craig, before we let you go, guys, you get your thoughts on this Landon DuPont kid. 82 points in 30 games in U18 as a defenseman, and he's 14 years old, gets exceptional <laughs> status into the dub, not eligible for the NHL draft until 2027, so we have three years to talk about him. But uh, how special is this kid? He, he's a real special player, and I and, and he's got a dynamic quality in his game and in, in, in his skating and his, and, and he's and he's he's got that daring. You know, when you think about uh, uh, Kale McCarr and you think about daring and you think about that ability to just I can do it. He's got that I can do it and that daring in his game. Great confidence, excellent skater, great mind and vision, and you know playing in the league that he played in. He's going to be he played against lots of players that are going to star in the uh, WHL in the years to come. So the confidence that he gained by knowing, hey, I'm one of the, I'm the best player there. It's pretty impressive. And certainly, you know, his dad, Mickey, was a really good player. He, he was with Calgary when I was the manager here. And certainly, you know, really well-grounded family. And I mean, he, he's ready to play. He's ready to play in the WHL. You know, there's a lot, I mean, the, ban- he, I mean, he, the Bantam draft was going to happen. He was going to be the first pick. There was no question about it. 
But this is about being ready to come into the WHL and play, and he is. Can't wait to see him. It's going to be a lot of fun. Craig, as always, man, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Yeah, have a great day, you guys. There you go. That's Craig Button. He's out on Vegas, and I love it. I out, I, I love it. Somebody's got to somebody's have that take on the Golden Knights. By the way, this DuPont kid, 82 points. 62 points. Sorry. 62 points in 30 games in U18, and he's 14 years old. I was watching. This is, this is how much of a sicko I am. I was watching highlights of him at the Brick Tournament, which was only four years ago for him, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. But he uh, he looked great there too. I saw him born. What? Yeah. So holy smokes! Top that. That's pretty <laughs> impressive. That's pretty impressive. So watch for this kid. Connor Bedard got the exceptional status. It's I think it's different rolling in as a five foot eleven defenseman, but when he moves the way that he moves, uh, I can't wait to see him. I think somebody mentioned intelligence as well in the nasty chat, really? and, and that obviously goes along with it. Right. Guy like, like composed, look again, looks like a looks like an adult. You should be calling him sir. Right. Like I just can't believe he's five years older than Marshall. Right? I'm like, that, what? That, that's what is this guy? You're like this guy's 14 years old. Can't drive. My God. Uh, oh, by the way, Craig Button. Uh, I was just checking out Button's Twitter, and he retweeted something last night from the awful announcing account. I'm just going to play it right now. Charles, this is Charles Barkley hating on people who were happy about the eclipse. Did you see this last night? Oh God, I can imagine. There we go. I thought it was. I, th- I thought it was. I thought it was maybe the Chuck Blimp that got in the way. Hey. I, I, well, y'all, some of them losers standing outside watching that today. They're not losers. Yes, they are. It, oh, it doesn't it just, happen often. Hey, we've time. all seen darkness before. Stop it. No, <laughs> not, not in the daylight. No, yeah. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> we've all seen darkness before. Stop it. <laughs> Chuck has a way of just boiling it down to the, man, the basic ingredient. Hey, Charles Barkley's so good. <laughs> what, a, what an absolute treasure. You all, were you all some of those losers standing outside watching the eclipse today? They're not losers, said Ernie Johnson. Yes, they are. Hey, we've all seen darkness before. Stop it. <laughs> oh, it's too good, man. I can play it one more time. Charles, Give him the mitt. Charles is the best. Maybe the Chuck Blimps that got in the way. Hey. I, I, well, y'all, some of them losers standing outside watching that today. They're not losers. Yes, they are. It, oh, it doesn't it just, happen often. Hey, time. we've all seen darkness before. Stop it. No, no, <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I like we've to stop it. We've all seen darkness before. <laughs> yeah. Stop it. Anyway, nice retweet there by Button. Follow him on Twitter if you haven't already. Craig J. Button is where you can find him on. Uh, maybe that's all I'll go with is my rebranding. Dustin B.K. Nielsen. <laughs> well, because I'm still rolling Nielsen TSN 1260. Okay, yeah. The station's been dead for almost a year. I still haven't been able to figure out where I want to go with my name next on Twitter. Dustin B. King. Dustin B. K. Nielsen. Or do I just go Dustin Bo? Oh, Bo would be nice. B O H. If the B K adds a bit of intrigue, people would be like, "Oh, what's the B?" You'd have to. Then it's a, you know, it's a. Oh, Dustin Burger King Nielsen. Uh, oh, well, there's real that funny. Too, yeah. yeah, real funny well, losers. Why don't you go stare at the sun a little bit longer? How about just Dustin Bokey Nielsen? The, the full too long, Monty. Too long. The full Monty. I still don't know what the, to do. Cry on I'm there. still somewhat considering Nielsen ESTSN. Because you get the EST. That's real good. TSN. Real good. But that might confuse a lot of people. Uh, that might confuse a lot of people as well. <laughs> Button just texted us, Eric greeting Landon DuPont, and it's you looking, somebody looking at a little I didn't baby. Know he caught that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that <was good. laughs> uh, Button sending gifts after the segment has become one of my favorite parts of the segment. That's uh, <laughs> Eric greeting Landon DuPont, somebody looking at a little baby. <laughs> nice chin strap on that lad. You're going to get exceptional status one day. <laughs> I know it, holding him up like bloody in 15 years. Simba in The Lion King. Yeah. Like, here, here we go. <laughs> Uh, I'm already I'm already trying to acquire 2027 draft picks in the Juan Rincon Hockey League. It's a keeper league. I want to go after well, them. That's how good franchises. The, the you same think ahead. strategy to get the McDavid pick is yep. paid off in the form of about to go three straight championships in a row. No big deal. So yeah, maybe that's uh, maybe that's what that we could uh, <laughs> we get that 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 text from buttons. Absolutely cracking me up right now. That's uh, that's real good. Uh, all right, uh, seven no. How, how let's follow up this button. Button is done with the Golden Knights. Okay, why are you taking the Golden Knights seriously? He says. So I'll ask you, listening this morning. So no, no worry for the Oilers facing them, and the, like it should be a. Well, as Matty Awanek <laughs> said, as Matty Awanek said, when we were in Vegas doing the show with Fly Y E G, 
If the Oilers get by the Golden Knights, they will easily win the Stanley Cup. Matty Awanik does not have time for your Colorados. Matty Awanik does not have time for your Dallas Stars or your Winnipeg Jets. Or your Nashville Predators. Yeah, well, I, I, mean, I should uh, say, sorry, Canucks fans. Uh, Matty Awanik doesn't have time for the Vancouver Canucks either. First place in the division the oops, entire year. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I would say, what would be your level? Uh, I, I do think there's some level of fear amongst Oilers fans when it comes to the Golden Knights. Correct me if I'm wrong. 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. I don't want to... Well, I'll just say it. On a level of 1 to 10, yeah. how concerned would you be with a playoff matchup against the Golden Knights? I'm at, I'm at well, like a 5.5. Well, I, I just, Maybe it, a 6. In this exercise, too, I'd like to ask then your thoughts on the Kings and or the Preds. The Kings, I'm at a 2. The others are beating the Los Angeles Kings. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisler are not losing a playoff series when they have to shoot on Talbot or Riddick. I'm sorry. End of story. Like, if the Riddick Oilers shut him out, if the Oilers, Talbot's got pretty good numbers this year. Enough. The Kings. The Kings are physical. They they choke feed me. feed me the Kings <laughs> on a silver platter. Yeah. Well, then so okay. Like so one of those lions with a buffalo tearing it on its inner thigh to kill it. You're not buying the Kings. You want to eat the Kings. Uh, Craig's not buying on the. Uh, he's walked away from the table for the Golden Knights. Uh, See you later. What about the Nashville Predators? Give me the Nashville Predators. Does not does, does not Leon Dreisaitl crushes the Nashville yep. Predators? Does he? Mayor of That's Mayor of Nashville, thing. yeah. But a very very good goalie, and as Craig pointed ah. out, like they're there for a reason. I'll say this: UC Saros, UC Smaros. I think they can take care of that too. Now Roman Yossi scares me a bit because he's defensive. I think can take. Can if take I'm the too. Oilers, in terms of who, I'd, and I'm not the Oilers. And it doesn't really matter what I think, but in terms of first round playoff opponents, I would prefer in this order the Preds, the Golden Knights, then the Kings. I'm going to make a bold claim today. Sure. April 9th, mark it down. First of all, Craig Button says the Knights are a non factor. And I say the Edmonton Oilers are 100% making it to the conference final. They're a conference final team. If. If they don't make it to the conference final, I I want you on here in in May, late April, whenever whenever they get eliminated, if they don't make the conference final, I want you on here being like Nielsen, you're the biggest homer in this city, but I I I, I just don't see them being stopped by Vegas, I don't see them being stopped by the Kings, and I know the Vancouver Canucks have had a great season. And I don't want to take anything away from the Vancouver Canucks. I think we've probably disrespected them enough already this season. But I just don't see this Edmonton Oilers team with Matthias Ekholm, a god among men on the back end, and uh, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreis. I don't see them losing to the Vancouver Canucks. So, yeah, I think the Edmonton... I'll give you an early prediction. I'm at least taking the Oilers to get to the conference final. Just say they're winning the cup. I can't, I can't do that on April 9th. That'd be a ridiculous statement. Be a ridiculous statement. I got to see how the bracket lines up. <laughs> this, but they're coming out of the they're coming out of the division. Okay, they're kind of, they, whether like, whether you win it or not. This is what up. we need to do. We need to sometimes own the fact that the rest of the West is probably very scared of the best team in the National Hockey League since the beginning of December. I think it's the Spider Man meme. They're all scared of each other. There's there's no re, like there's no easy out. This isn't the Eastern Conference here, right? Like this K is this is the Big West. KCF is in and says Canucks with Demko take them. That comes in from, uh, like, nothing against Demko, who's been great now. He hasn't played in a while. What, could he get re-injured here at some point in the playoffs? But also, not to steal a line from The Rock here, but I really like the idea of final bosses, since, since he's become a final boss in WWE again. Um, Demko's the final boss for McDavid and Dreisaitl in a cup window? I don't know. I don't know about that one. So... Yeah. Serve them up on one of their stupid shiny helmets, Dex says, in your uh, in your fantasy to to eating the Golden Knights. Yeah, that's what, that's what it <laughs> is. Wanna... <laughs> Big uh, medieval. Yeah, Man, I'm back in the Kootenai Ice, I don't know why I started, but back when the Kootenai Ice were really good in the churn, late baby 90s, churn. they would, oh, it was... I had my girlfriend at the time. She is a big Cooney Ice fan. I remember we'd go back, and they were on the run they had. Was like, it the Blackburn days? Was that it was the... Not, no, this was post-Dan Blackburn. Oh, okay. Uh, when they won the Western Hockey League. And in Cranbrook, anytime they would score, everybody would get up and, like, churn the pot, like, churn a cauldron. So, like, the whole crowd was going <laughs> like this. And I just couldn't get into it. I mean, I was 20 maybe at the time. 
So I, maybe I was too cool for school or something. But I just thought it was one of the lamest things ever. Everybody would always just go, do do do. And I'd look at my girlfriend, and she would be like, nah, nah, nah. I was just like, stop it. I'm, I'm walking out of here. This is game seven of a Western Hockey League final or whatever it was. Um, yeah, that was, that was bad. That was bad. Guys, Vegas Golden Knights are built to beat the Oilers. They just don't match up well against them. Stoney from Stoney's in and says, I hate Hill. <laughs> all right. All right. I want X Patrick Waugh, if you will. Seabass is in and says, I really don't see the Kings having a level of physicality that the Oilers can't match. Jay in the Park says, I do worry about the Knights, but only because the Oilers can be mental mush against them would be a huge hurdle besting them early. I see what you did there. Uh, he spelt it hurdle. I didn't oh, mean to come across but that I way. Mean, hey, that was not a Thomas Hurdle pun. <laughs> I think we should give it to I'm him. I'm not sitting here making Thomas Hurdle puns sometimes, before the playoffs. Sometimes you fall backwards into him, and in this case, uh, <laughs> that's... <laughs> oh, Hurdle. <laughs> 780-218-9999. Uh, Johnny, the accountant, is in and says, Vegas is still a team to worry about because they're still a good team. Don't forget about their LTI roster of fresh players. Uh, Johnny, the accountant. It's picking your poison, right? Well. And not, not to say any of these poisons will kill the Oilers in, in a sense either. It's just, you know, some poisons might do a little more damage. Like, I mean, again, going back to the Kings, I, I just think that whether or not they think they're, they're primed to win a Stanley Cup, you know, you're going to come out of that series pretty pretty battered. I just think a, a series with Nashville, an opening round series with the Nashville Predators, I, I just don't see any any bad... There's no bad blood. There's no prior grievances to be here. There's no nothing. You go in there, you, you take the series in five, and you move on. I was going to say five. I think that's the ideal opening round. Yeah. Because you, you're not seeing any of that... Any of the prior stuff bubbling over, or 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 guys losing their head in moments, like I just there's such so much of that rivalry with Vegas and the LA Kings that I just think Nashville would be a, a breath of fresh air, and they can kind of go out and use the opening round as a bit of a warm up. Is it just me, or is anybody else getting excited about the playoffs? Hey, yeah, hey, this is kind of exciting. This is an exciting time right here. Hammer the thumbs up if you excited about the playoffs. Let's go. Let's try to take a run at 400. Keep the streak alive. Cool bet hotline of the day today. Uh, let's go here. If you're not yet signed up for account at Cool Bets, uh, please do use the code LockShop when you sign up, and you get a 100% deposit bonus on your initial deposit up to 200 smackaroos. Busy night in the NHL tonight. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13, 13 games. Uh, 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 uh. NBA's got 14. Uh, NBA always does it better, don't they? The, the NBA just it's always just does it better. It's just one of those uh, yeah, ding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, I was I already made a wager on a few of these games uh, last night. Let's see here. Tampa Bay Lightning on the puck line minus one point five at minus one thirty three. They get Columbus tonight in Tampa. I don't hate that one. Uh, what's the value on the Kings in regulation tonight against the Ducks? At Anaheim. Minus 161. Mm, don't necessarily love that, but let me see some player points tonight for the Los Angeles Kings. What do we got here? Nah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> well, I think we'll roll Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Actually, you know what we'll probably do here? Let me see. Player points. I don't want to be the guy who's like, Kucherov, Kucherov, Kucherov. Getting too many points lately. But Kucherov over one and a half points if you're looking for a little sprinkle, minus 103 tonight. At home against Columbus. Actually, you know what? Screw it. Let's just do it. That's going to be your cool hotline of the day. The guy's just been putting up a ton of points lately. Kucherov over one and a half points, minus 103 tonight. At home for the Tampa Bay Lightning against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Because the Art Ross doesn't matter. The others are here for Stanley Cups. Who cares about the Art Ross? And cash in on Kucherov. You, Stanley Cup. You basically, even money. <laughs> you don't get ahead of yourself. Right, that's here, not right? my prediction. <laughs> right, oh, don't right. put me in. That's not my prediction today. We gotta get to the Stanley Cup final. <laughs> we gotta get to the Stanley Cup playoffs before we all of a sudden start giving full predictions. I just said today, I think the Oilers are coming out of the West or out of the uh, yeah. out of the division. Oh, oh my goodness! Oh, oh, I am hey, talking in circles the here. I am talking in circles. By the end of the show, it'll be back to backs. You'll be talking about is it <laughs> second? Second? Yeah. <laughs> I think they're going to... Dynasty? How many? Take that, you Yukon Huskies. Only, only uh, four fingers and a thumb on a hand. All right, second half of the uh, second hour of the show today. Weekly confessions are on the way next. What do you need to confess? Keyword for Vegas, 745. That's 15 minutes. 
I says pardon for Lawyer Central on the way as well. Uh, keep on hammering the thumbs up over on YouTube. And if you're not yet subbed to the channel, we're now over 7,500 subs, making the push towards 8,000. So uh, tell your friends to sub to Evans Sports Talk on YouTube if they're looking for some good sports content. Let's get to a sports update with LTE. Four Park Mazda confessions on the other side. A pair of games around the NHL last night. Austin Matthews scoring his 65th of the campaign in a 3-2 overtime win for the Leafs over the Penguins. Canucks topping the Golden Knights out in Vancouver 4-3. Oilers this morning waking up five points back of Vancouver with a pair of games in hand. Four tops in the Pacific. Edmonton will welcome in Vegas tomorrow night. 13 games in the NHL later this evening. Jays victorious in their home opener with a 5-2 win over Seattle. Game two, that three-game series goes later this evening. First pitch, 5-0-7. The Jays will send Chris Bassett to the mound. UConn are back-to-back -back champions. They outlast Purdue 75-60. The men's March Madness final. Huskies first school since 07 to capture back-to-back -back national championships. 14 games around the NBA tonight, one of which will see the Raptors at home to the Pacers. Back over to hockey, USA defeating Canada 1-0 in overtime at the Women's World Hockey Championships. USA topping Group A with the win. Canada will now face Sweden in a quarterfinal on Thursday. And AJHL second round action continues tonight. Canmore Eagles, White Court Wolverines, Game 7 from White Court. The winner will advance to face Calgary in the final. Sports update brought to you by the great staff at Park Mazda, where dealer principal Mitch Lewicki asks one important question this morning. Who should the Oilers face in the opening round of the playoffs, and who would it be easier if the Oilers played a team in the Nashville Predators, the LA Kings, or the Golden Knights? He asks you this question, Dusty. Tell me, who who would it be? It doesn't matter! It doesn't matter! It doesn't matter! It doesn't matter. If you're like me, you like to picture yourself in luxury, even though there's absolutely no way you could afford it. And if you can, well, even better. Thankfully, I picture myself in something that is luxury, but still absolutely affordable, like the all-new Mazda CX-90 from Park Mazda. With the new luxury features like facial recognition settings and quilted detail Napa leather seating, I can pretend to be comfortable with all of my proper settings activated without even touching a button, thanks to Mitch Lewicki and the great staff of Park Mazda. I like to picture Mitch Lewicki as a ninja fighting off evil samurai. Park Mazda, your dealer for life in Sherwood Park off Y Road, parkmazda.ca. Something under my skin And the itch won't go away It's my original sin The poison that I crave Come along for the ride I'd make you feel better Cut the rope that I tied But then I you got me fiending for that first high But the feeling's not the same You got me stealing, killing, I die Just to feel you in my Veins Oh, Whale and the Wolf. That song's called Veins, in case you didn't pick up on it. Find uh, Whale and the Wolf, everything they're doing over on the uh, Spotify EST house band, and, uh, and good guys, and hilarious on Twitter. They, uh, they really are. And the guitar player is a barber. You can get your hair cut from him. What? Uh, yeah, he cuts the... Uh Actually, that's what we should do. We should that's that's got to be a weird spot to be in when the guitar player is a barber, but everybody else has long hair in the band. You're obviously not using his services. Go for a trim, I guess. I guess, yeah. Clean up those split ends. So, oh, split ends, eh? Do you yeah, deal with split ends? All I the need time? well, yeah. It's... I don't think my hair's ever been long enough to have split ends. The worst. But yeah, you should go see Eggy for a trim one of these times. He'd love it if you, you popped so? in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be nice. That'd be real nice. And it's an old style barber, so they kind of got the old oh, scissors. Oh, okay. Like okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... Does it have one of those poles? I think you have to drink whiskey or something. So, oh, that yeah. sounds real nice. We should talk to him. We'll get the EST birdie juice in there. That'd be nice. I think that's a pretty good idea. I'm sure the whale boys will be uh, all over that birdie juice. Oh, I love right? that. A couple bottles in the tour uh, tour bus. I, you know what I love about Craig Button? He's on the last segment. He say he just hangs out and watches the show when we're done with him. He just watches and then chimes in. It's uh, it's pretty hilarious actually. <laughs> just and then he texts us and goes like, continue oh, to contribute. Yeah, to the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if we said to Craig Button, we want you on every day from seven to eight, he'd be like, yes, I'm in. 
Hey, Trev, like you see, Trev yeah, keeps watching to see if he's disconnected. I, I always like just keep watching. to see what, uh, when Button's on, because everyone else is, you know, they're in a hurry to, to leave, and they've got a lot of stuff to do. And uh, But no, Button, Button's just, he chills, and he, yeah. he has his coffee, and he sits back, and he'll laugh at everything. And I'm just like, and I, like, I always whip up the screen, because I love seeing it, what he, you know, and when you guys talk about him, like when you mentioned the text that he had sent, oh, yeah. uh, he was just chuckling away at that, and then I got a <laughs> chuckle out of it. So it's super cool, just, and He's just, just no, no rush to leave. Yeah. It's, it's super nice. So yeah, buttons of beauty. Everybody's chuckling. Everybody's. Wouldn't chuckling. mind him in here hanging out one of these days. Oh, if you that'd, be I mean, amazing. Wouldn't that be amazing. Yeah, that'd be great. He'd fit in really well in that room. He'd be great on the hangout. Never man. leave. Uh, we're at 188 likes on YouTube right now. Let's let's crank it up. Like to get to 400 today, we're just past the midway point of the show. We're just shy of it. I think we can take a run at it. If you're just if you're just tuning in right now, if you're watching today, we've hit 400 two days in a row. So it's a streak now. So let's hammer that again. Let's let's keep that rolling. Let's continue to uh, to build that up. And of course, if you're listening on TuneIn or on iHeart, just make sure you favorite Edmonton Sports Talk. Very easy to uh, to pop up after that one. Uh, we got people in the nasty chat offering Lieutenant Eric a cat. What an interesting place what? today. Paris Jewelers inbox. Yeah, Sam oh, the, the vet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam yeah, the vet. Oh, yeah, I'm going through. <laughs> well, hey, if it's Eric, a vet, are you uh, looking for a cat? Yeah, I'm assuming that cats. Relatively healthy. If it's some of the other handles, I wouldn't be, uh, you know, yeah. uh, Tom Dixon's mustache. I don't really think I want a cat from that individual. <laughs> but Sam the Vet, sure, I, I'm listening. That I'll, works out uh, okay. Either. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk here. But all right, let's get into your confessions today. Brought to you by Spectrum Rental, where they confess to having too many pieces of brand new compaction equipment for the upcoming construction season. They've got plate tamperers up to a thousand pounds for rent. Sale or rent to own. Whether you need something for a small job or have a session of full compacting, the boys at Spectrum have you covered. Man, so that is that that uh, is that the thing that just pounds? <laughs> is that what that is? I hope. And, uh, and you can see every little granule of sand bouncing up. At <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. When when I when I tamper, I tamper hard AF. That's how I tamper. Yeah, yeah, boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. And we get it all at Spectrum Rental. What's your confession today? You said you had a bit of a nasty confession. Yeah. Um, I want to... I don't want to get myself into too much hour. I had last week, I, I admitted that I, uh, I was a, th a thief, right? Theft. Yes, that was, that yes was the, he did. The topic on weekly rankings of he power. Did. And, and petty, petty crime, you know, petty, you know, it's <laughs> batteries and paper and whatnot. I mean, that's not a big thing. Um, but I do confess, uh, I have been... My, hi, I'm Lieutenant Eric, and I confess... Um, I've been going for, for long walks in the afternoon down to the River Valley, and I've been returning home with three to four uh, large stones in my backpack. So I've been... I've been uh, Why? What are you building? I got a landscape project on the go in my backyard. So you're stealing stones well, from the I River Valley. No, I'm not stealing anything. Look, Mother Nature... I, I, I pick up metric tons of garbage during the calendar year from going out and walking. Oh, I'll bring that's a little fair, then. So look, I'm going to the River Valley. It's, it's, I, I, I'm not on like crown land. I don't, I don't know. Am I? I, I don't know. Who owns the River Valley? <sighs> Nobody but, ever knows that. But I mean, you go Is down to shareholders. There's it's little, probably shareholders. There's tunnels and stuff. That, there's lots of stuff down there. And I, I feel that if I go down there and take, I'll give you some advice today too, if you want. Yes. There's, there's lots of good, uh, uh, nutrient rich soil, dirt, uh, gravel. Uh, I'm not going down there. Are you half stealing ton. soil too? I'm not stealing you're, but you're soil. you're taking soil. Look, but I'm not going down there with a half ton truck and having a team, you know, taking, you know, I'm just taking a few rocks and a few stones here or there and you're like the repurposing them in my yard. You're like the old guy in the Count of Monte Cristo who's just digging, taking a little bit of dirt One at a time. time. Yeah. yeah. And is that such a big deal? I don't think so. Do you think anybody will ever come to your backyard and look and point at the stones and go, those are from the river? Well, they can't. But if I was caught like red handed. Yeah. I mean, if you confess on a show. I in the no, city. But, but I confess that it, it is a little. I, I, look, I, I put them in the bag when nobody's around. I don't do it in front of people. But if somebody were to see me, would they say anything? Would you say anything? If you were down in the River Valley and you saw somebody putting, you know, medium-sized stones into a bag to, to carry, I've would been you, down to the River Valley like question? three times in the I've last five years. I've seen a lot worse than that. Lot I was going to say, in the three times I've been there in the last five years, I've seen worse. Yeah, than so you I mean, I, rocks. am I good? Am I? So, are we good here? Yeah, I, 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 I confess because I, I don't feel bad. I just is it is it is it bad? I do want to follow you down there one day and just from a distance watch you find rocks that you want to take well, I, home I'm, and. 
Sometimes are you those walking woods, man, or are you, you biking? Hear, oh, I'm walking. Oh, you're walking. I'm walking, okay. baby. And those woods talk like you can hear people. I'm sure people have been spying on me, watching me do it. And I'm thinking, what is this uh, individual doing? But Imagine if you ever find buried treasure. Picking up rocks well, and uh, digging dirt and stuff. Uh, the geocaching. Ah, That's always going down. I've down never there. geocached. Like, There's another confession for you. Never geocached once. There's that one guy, and actually uh, Trevor Savage, uh, an yeah, OG Savage. nasty, yeah, yeah. right? He loves winning stuff. So when I met him earlier this season at the Central Casino Sports Bar and Lounge for NFL football every Monday and Thursday night, he told me that there's this guy, a, ri a richer man, uh, but he hides like a coin around either Calgary or Edmonton. And then he'll give this series of riddles, and they're very hard. But if you find this coin, he will give you like boatloads of money in front of the police station. And he's done it on, on video. Like, he, But you got to find the coin, and he'll hide it in a really weird spot, and you'll have like these series of riddles. You can pay for more clues. So it's like geocaching on, on this HGH. Guy's, this guy's a weirdo. No, it's great, but you get lots of money. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll get Trevor Savage. You should your, play uh, that game then. I ain't paying. You need money? To well, you need to, because he gives you some clues. They're very vague, but then to get more specific ones, you kind of got to. Oh, so it's a Ponzi scheme. Well, but if, if <laughs> you, you invest that money for the clues, leading to a big payday. I don't technically know what a Ponzi scheme is, but I like to claim a number of things are. Huh. If you say it, Classic people won't. Classic Ponzi scheme. Nobody's going to call people you have to say, Yeah, other people are the same way. They're like, yeah. Define it. Exactly. It's a Ponzi scheme. Exactly. Uh, here's my confession. I'm very intrigued by AI, but I have no idea where to even do it. Like last night I Googled. I legit Googled last night, where do I AI? And uh, I don't, I don't what know. What are if, the results? Like, do, you, do you need an account? Do you not need an account? I thought you could just go on like chat GPT. So I went on chat. I, I went to chat GPT. Very basic looking website. The one that I had. It might have been a fake chat GPT. And I, uh, I typed in. I, I was looking to like to create a graphic. So I typed in, I need a graphic. And then it just gave me a sentence. I was like, AI sucks. Like, I don't, I don't know AI. What's the, uh, I, I'm very intrigued by it. I'm scared of it a little bit too. But I want to know how to do it. I want to know how to AI things. Um, you're on Twitter. You got the Twitter up? Yeah, I got Twitter. Go up. to your go to your main page, like okay. the home. You know, on the left side, it has Home Explorer notifications. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Hit the Grok. Button. What is Grok? Well, it just Grok early access. This is an early version of Grok. It may confidently provide factual, incorrect information. Is this an AI it's thing? A, it's a form of AI, I do believe. And you you have a check mark, do you not? I think yes, you probably I do. Get, yes, you probably I do. Get, you don't have to pay or anything. You're right in there. So got it. Use use the grok. Maybe the grok. grok will, uh, it says grok anything. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna grok tombstone. Grok away. Tombstone movie, and then I just hit enter. Sure. I <laughs> Searching for tombstone movie. The movie Tombstone is a 1993 American Western film that is loosely. So this is just a oh, Google so it's search. A search engine. It's just a search engine. <laughs> wow. Grok is just a search engine. The future is now. Well, that's not. That's not. I mean, that's pretty lame. Brings up some tweets. That's it. Yeah. That's not AI. That's nothing. Trev, do you AI much? Uh, no, I do not, but my brother does. Your brother's an AIer. Yeah, he's he uses it a lot, actually, for D&D. &D. And I see that Joe Belineski in the nasty chat. Chat GPT is great. I use it for all my D&D. &D, uh, what what's D&D? &D? DMing needs. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> Why are you AIing for Dungeons and Dragons? I don't like, get like it. Like to make your character? Like... What? You can make your character, I uh, guess. Let's just stop. You thought uh, D&D was like another... You're like, oh, it's D&D. Do not disturb. <laughs> Why are you using AI for do not disturbing? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, this one says, guys, ask AI to write a song for Oilers goals. Yeah, but I don't even know where to go to get the AI. That's the thing. Like, that's how, that's how oblivious I am to artificial intelligence. <laughs> I think we missed the cutoff line, to be honest. I think, yeah, so. I think and I think yeah. this is this is your moment where you're like, "Huh, I'm 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 this age, and and I can just I be like, oh, those, the ball those those kids in the AI, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. I want to AI myself. It sounds like a Ponzi scheme to me. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> That's the mid journey is the AI that you need for images. Oh, man, I'll look into it later. It just it's a lot. It's a lot today. If you have any confessions of your own. 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. Dave the Welder's in and says, I'm still the old-fashioned way of AIing with my arm and a straw of semen to impregnate a cow. Yes. Artificial insemination. Yes. My dad used to AI back in the day on the farm. It was gross. It was very gross. 
There could be a text of the day within this little... Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Not on this one. We are... We oh, are I- no, text of the day today is completely focused on Purdue, more like Purboo, UConn, more like you win... So we've got, uh, we've got those out there. That's text of the day. We don't need your AI texts today as well. Northside Sandwich says, Dusty still uses Facebook to poke people, doesn't he? Uh, I really you love a good poke. I only use Facebook to open up hockey cards. That's it. And go on to see pictures of my own kids that my wife posts. So I'm like, oh, the kids. Well, I didn't see this. this is a, that's what I use Facebook for. MJS is in this. Says, I used to collect a lot of fossiled wood and even dinosaur bone fragments from the River Valley gravel bars in West Ed. Really? Dinosaur bones. Cool. <laughs> All right, let's get you a keyword. Spectrum Rental. If you need something to tamper at 1,000 pounds of pressure, they got it covered for you. Spectrum Rental presenting you with confessions every single week. All right, keyword today for the EST Flyway to Vegas. We've teamed up with the airport. Fly YEG. WestJet dropping some directs, adding some directs. I guess it's different. You don't want to say dropping directs because they're adding them. But they've added some directs to Ottawa and Montreal from Fly YEG. So that could change your summer plans if you're looking to get out of town and, I don't know, fly away. That's what we're trying to do. Two nonstop flights, three nights accommodations, tickets for a Cirque show presented by Fly YEG and the LVCVA. Nonstop flights over 50 destinations. Your sports trip starts with a nonstop flight from Fly YEG. Visit www.flyyeg.com for more. Taking a look at today's keywords, we do have three actual words and then one league abbreviation. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's happening. Keyword today on the Nielsen Show. All you have to do is hear the word, or if you're watching on YouTube, read the word, then text it into 780-218-9999, 780 218 Ninety-nine, ninety-nine. Today's keyword for the ESC Flyway to Vegas is jackpot. Hey, J A C K P O T. Jackpot. I want to use that more around, like when something good happens. Oh, jackpot. Well, there was the uh, yeah, the, 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 playing ball growing up. You, 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 somebody would toss the ball way up high in the air, like five hundred point six. But if you yelled jackpot and threw it up, that was that was the jackpot. You got to go jackpot. Up. Yeah, if you if you uh, our EST net there, I think if we we swish a shot now, you yell jackpot. Why not? At least during the giveaway here, I uh, we substitute that word in as much as we can. I don't think I remember yelling jackpot for five hundred up. I think I used to. I think we used to yell in BC automatic up. Jackpot would have been way better. I think it was jackpot. I'm pretty sure. I, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. Is that my? Yeah. It okay. was, we used it jackpot too. too. That was a great simple game. It was so much fun. It really was. Like kids probably nowadays don't play 500 up anymore. Well. That's sad to me. That's really sad. We had some great games. You could use a football. You could use uh, a tennis ball. We use a tennis ball We'd a choke lot. each other out to pass each oh, other. A real <laughs> big. Re- yeah. Man, the kids are just so well, buried in social media nowadays that they don't even play 500 up, let alone heads up, seven up. To take the words from one Evander Kane, it's all just too soft, is it not, hey? Pretty much. Yes. I mean, this you, can't, you can't yell jackpot in public anymore? What do you the, guy, the guy nailed Maybe. it. What can you say? Text jackpot to 780-218-9999, 780-218-9999. And if you're looking to hit the jackpot in this bad boy, hey. uh, I'd suggest sticking around on EST. Hang out. Lock shop, two guys and a goalie today. Better odds of qualifying on those daytime shows than the morning show. Straight up. I mean, we're helping you cheat on this, essentially. And if you qualify, say, right now, you don't sit back like Luke Skywalker after kissing his sister. You're not, you're not fat and happy. That's, that's one. That's, that's one. you got to come back and keep getting more and keep getting more. I mean, you gotta, you got to get in this. You don't just qualify once and sit back. Best of luck, everybody. What are you? What are you giggling at over there? Trev's just having a very amusing morning over on the uh, in the corner here of the uh, of the studio. All right, let's get to I says pardon. I says pardon is brought to you by Lawyer Central. Get a clean slate at an affordable rate with Lawyer Central. Triple W Lawyer Central dot com slash pardons or call one triple eight two eight eight eighty one seventy seven. That's one triple eight two eight eight eighty one seventy seven. They get you a clean slate and affordable rate, but they can also handle anything else you have issues with from a legal perspective as well. Triple W dot Lawyer Central dot com to find out more about 
all of the other issues they can help you with. And they've got lawyers all across the country. So no matter where you're listening or watching, they can help you out. Lawyer-Central.com. Uh, I'm a little conflicted here on I Says Pardon today. Did you see Juan Soto signing an autograph mid at bat while he's out in the outfield? Walk, oh, walked baseball in, again, hey? Walked out and signed an autograph in the outfield while there was an at bat happening. And part of me is like, that is great interaction with fans that you really can't get anywhere else. But another part of me is sitting there going, what if the ball is hitting your direction and you're out here signing a baseball for a fan? Like he keeps, he, I'm watching the video right now. He walks out to the outfield wall. They throw him a pen. They throw him a ball. And the at bat is happening. And I'm torn is, on this. And he, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong. He is playing for an organization that still doesn't allow like facial hair, right? Is that kind of the uh, <laughs> yeah the Yankees? So 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 you have like, to be clean shaven yeah. everywhere. But hey, if you want to be, you know, during the the play of the game, <laughs> interacting with fans, I'm for it. I, I hear you. I'm trying to think. Like, do I love this or do I absolutely think it's ridiculous? I would love it if it's the Diamondbacks or something, and I'd be like, oh, c- cool. That's or the Marlins. I mean, the Marlins should be doing this. It should be common practice. But I know he's got Yankees? a thing where he interacts with fans. Yeah, I, okay, that's I fine. I think it's but, different, like standing there. But you clean it up playing for the Yankees. Yeah. So this, 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 you can't have this behavior. The legends that have graced that pinstripe. And- I mean, when you run out onto the field before an inning starts, somebody has a ball, they throw to you with a pen. Sign. I know everybody's like, this is legendary stuff. And I guess it is, but at the same time, it's a little disrespectful to the game and the opponent. That the guy is at bat and he's looking out to right field and Soto's at the fence signing autographs. I don't and, know. And, I, I saw yesterday. I, I thought I said and, and for a middle aged man. I know there was a kid beside him. But, well, it uh, had to have been for a kid. I well, think. no, he he puts the ball in his glove, holds up the glove, like. <laughs> but there's a little kid right. Oh, on there's his a right. kid beside him. But uh, we know baseball fans and their balls. Hey? It is funny because when uh, he gets the ball back, he doesn't hand it to the kid. Oh no, no, you see this? He puts it in his glove. And he's like, keeping it. He's not like. Come on, I've done it. It's it's a. It's a game of survival for getting those autograph balls. Hey, I, what do we think of this? Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Kill your mother for one. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. And the pitch happens like almost immediately after, correct? Like he springs back in action. Yeah, he, he, like it's, he it's, hustles back yeah. and it, it, it's foul ball, I think, because yeah. he's a little reaction, but that's it. So, yeah, I don't know. It's just weird to me. I'm but, all for the Marlins. I, I and again, some of those other teams that really have nothing else going on, but. The Yankees. Ooh. I might also be jealous of this baseball fan because I've never caught a ball at a baseball game. Like, I've got one that, like, hit the bleachers and you pick it up and you give it to your kid or another yeah, yeah. kid. But I've never straight up caught one. And I'd like to. I'd like to. I put that on my bucket list. I don't even care. I, I Like a Riverhawks game. I'll take it. Foul ball. Absolute. Catch it into my hat or my bare hands. The odds are pretty against you even going in. Would you? Would you then, though, if you caught it... <laughs> and you're sitting next to like a young family or I mean not your kids there say you're there if my alone. kids are there I'm giving them to the kids absolutely but you're there with a couple of guys and there's a family sitting in front I'm not even hesitating I'm not even hesitating because then, then you my look man. at it my man so, so it's hit uh, now it's so it's hit down the uh, the third baseline at a Riverhawks game sure which yeah. is where we're we up with Mooner sit. yeah yeah sitting up there what does Maddie call him section, section I, I game. Yeah, yeah so we're sitting up there in section <laughs> I the ball comes up to us and I make a great barehanded play on it so you're like, oh, my God, I'm reaching back. I'm snagging it. Outstanding, yeah. And people are like, what a catch. What a phenomenal athlete this guy is. And then you turn around and you hand the ball to the family. And then and then everybody's like, and what a great man he is. Oh, my God. And yeah. You're checking off two significant boxes there. Like I, Credit credit coming out your ass. Like, you've got credit for years uh, after that one. People will be going to games 10 years from now. And so I remember the day I saw that man. Yeah. He made a phenomenal catch, barehanded. And then handed the ball to a child. Won't have to buy a hot dog in this city ever again. That type of thing. Shouldn't have to if you do something like that. Shouldn't have to. Riverhawks games. Get me to the park. Less than two months away. (laughs) Let's go to the park. Let's get to the park. Even you mentioning that, I just Yeah, we're thinking, we're actually, we've been in some talks with the Riverhawks. We are considering live stream from the game, which would kind of be a lot of fun too. Like sitting there watching the game live stream. It'd be good. I think it'd be kind of down in the patio area. Get a little tent set up. Have the game behind us. Be a lot of fun. And if you've not yet checked out a Riverhawks game in oh. this city, I'm telling you, you are completely dropping the ball. I know many of you would have, but some of you might be like, I like my ball to be major league ball. But you're failing miserably if you haven't been to a Riverhawks game. The beers are delicious. Shout out Alley Cat. 
the food is pretty damn good. I had a poutine there last last year that I put up with any other poutine anywhere. Oh, the food is great. Yeah. And the atmosphere is just great. It's in the ballpark, down by the river in the summer. Come on. Great club shop as well. They've done an amazing job. The patio, the Building suites. up the River Hawks, yeah, man. No, like it's, it's, uh, it's a good time down there. A real good time. And they're not even a Major League Baseball team, hey? I Funny know, that. I believe and you can still go out and enjoy it. How can, you, uh, how can you do that? <laughs> Trevor, are you going to find somebody or what's going on here? Somebody didn't answer? Nobody wants it. I love it. Oh, and my God. And somebody's sitting there being like, pick me, pick me. One of those eclipse-watching <laughs> losers, yeah. according to Charles Barkley. We've all seen darkness Stop before. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> that could be your sound of the day there. That's uh, that's pretty good. We are going to get a qualifier here for the EST Flyway to Vegas. Trevor calls somebody else who, you know, wants to win a trip to Vegas for free. My goodness. Yeah. My tr- this is a good one from uh, Jocelyn. My truck has wanted to drive to Tellus Field all winter. Can't wait. Timber Woodsman says, this is the only complaint is the beer bats need to hold two beer. Well, the beer bat, too, is a bit of a... I mean, that's just... It's a showpiece, really. I, I don't... Uh, I like beer bat. For the kids, you know, that type of I thing. I got I'm one not, last year. Yeah, I know. But I'm not, I'm not pouring beers. In, like, it's not the best way to consume a beer, I'd say. I, uh, I took the beer bat home, and Marshall broke it within, like, an hour. Oh, no. I was like, damn. Cracking dingers? So it was... Or was, it was uh, <laughs> yeah, it, got, it kind of got cracked on it. So he corked it, did he? <laughs> yeah, I lost it on him. <laughs> what have you done? And now they were tough to find. Like, I'm hoping oh, the River Hawks, hot, yeah. River Hawks got to bring in four times the beer bats this year. Cause, but they're also pouring tall boys in there. and But it's not filling all the way up. So I think you might be able to jam two regular-sized beers into a beer bat. Or at least have that second one almost in there, and then you just sort of finish it off, crush the can, yeah, right. recycle it responsibly. Four or five bottles and of birdie then, juice, uh, maybe, hey? <laughs> then go from there. Get those bats looking blue. <laughs> I'll Bird, do it. I don't get it. Birdie juice. Look. Beer bat. If I have to put my body on the line for this. God. Sean, 780-218-9999. I would like to catch a baseball with my pint of beer at a Riverhawks game and be cheered by the crowd to chug my beer. Yeah, that's be a cool. real wish. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's... That's a real wish. Is the beer bat opening at the top big enough to catch a beer? No. Yeah, it'd be tight. To catch a ball? No. You, you, you'd yes, cone it. You it, it just it. sit perfectly Can you top. imagine <laughs> coning it on top of there? That would be the most legendary... Wow. Legendary one ever. You should almost get a day contract if that's the case. Something. That would be that would be incredible, man. I absolutely love that. All right, 246 likes. You guys, we're going to do it. We are within striking distance of 400 again today. We still have an hour left. We need 154 more likes. Let's hammer that thing. Hammer it. And I'll say this. If we hit 400 likes by the time we get to the sound of the day, I will play any clip that you want. Any clip. Any song. Anything you want. So let's go. Let's Stop do it. it. Keep hammering that Stop thumbs it. up. Sound of the day could be anything. Whatever you want. We do have a qualifier. Trev sounds pretty Chatty tired Kathy up. over here. Hey, yeah. yeah. I don't know if Trev knows, but we need to get this guy on the air here. <laughs> uh, Trev's going full Zacticum. Zacticum has great conversations with these people. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, awesome. Yeah, long distance be damned. He doesn't care about the charge. Yeah. Keep- <laughs> I love listening to Zach talk to these qualifiers. So, would you like to go to Vegas? Yes. Yes, I would. It's, yes, <clears throat> it's quite the, uh, you're filled with info after a talk with Zach, I'd say, hey? Uh, no stone unturned. Troy texts in and says, guys, it was me on the missed call. My phone fell under my seat while I was driving. Ooh, Ouch! Tough one. That's the Godfather. Ooh. The Godfather. <laughs> tough, tough, one. tough pill to swallow. Uh, all right, you two, Jeff. Oh. Who do we have qualified today? Retro Oiler. Retro Oiler. Oh, I think he's already qualified. Yes, he oh, has. I think this might be his second qualifying. See, this is how it happens. All people. right, let's go to Retro Oiler. Congratulations, buddy. How about this? I told people just answer the phone. I That's said it. it on the nasty chat. Your uh, <laughs> your chances have now doubled. I think statistically, nope. however that works. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. It's really good. Yeah. I, I'm still going to take the wife, though. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, maybe with the second qualification, you tell her if it's the second one that wins, she's out. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Take the newborn and say, who the hell are you all of a sudden? <laughs> ah, yeah, well yeah. done. Retro Oiler, congratulations, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day. All right. You too, man. Have I, a great day. He takes his newborn and a baby Bjorn. Like, yeah, all, be around, that, that, all around, all around Vegas. A newborn, yeah. That's what you want to be with. Yeah. That's... Uh, 
That's pretty good. Hey, Dusty, have you found the low tide ball with the bod, the bang to bang diggy clip? Oh, boy. I don't know. We'll never find out if we don't get to 400 likes today. I think I probably have that. I think I, I probably do, but whatever. I mean, we'll see. <laughs> but we don't get there until we don't, we we don't need to worry so. about it exactly. until we get to 400 likes. Yeah. After that, the vault is completely wide open. We'll go there. You want we built this Smitty? I'll give you we built this Smitty. It doesn't even matter. A Tombstone Tuesday miracle, oh my if God. we get there. Halloween. Exactly. A halloo to all of you today as well. Who wants to play Kind of Easy Trivia today? 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. We've got a gift certificate to Mr. Mike's Steakhouse Casual. Just sitting here waiting for you. All you have to do is get three of five correct. My seven-year-old daughter could get three of five correct today. I think. Let me Let's see. Five and five. Uh, no, she probably couldn't. But Marshall would. Anyway, we've got that coming up. If you want to play today, 780-218-9999. Three questions too many. Gager's going to pop by. He sent a video this morning. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm assuming it's hilarious. I'll have to watch it before. That's we what I was up. laughing at. Is that what you were laughing at? Yes. It's, it, we probably can't talk about it, no. can we? It's dirty? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm going to have to watch it, though. Man, so you were laughing that much. It must be oh, a funny so video. Good. It's so good. It's so good. I love it. Uh, all right. We've got a sports update for Claiborne Services. If you're looking for work and you want to make a ton of money really fast and also possibly launch a brand new career, Claiborne Services is looking for you. We're not even messing around. ClaiborneServices.com. They are hiring now. He's got more info on how you can talk, contact them, but uh, 780-218-9999 if you want to play Kind of Easy Trivia this morning. Let's get to a sports update with LTE for Claiborne Services. Thirteen games around the NHL tonight. The Oilers are back on the ice tomorrow when they host Vegas. Edmonton five back of the Canucks with a pair of games in hand for tops in the Pacific following last night's Vancouver win over Vegas. 4-3 your final. Leafs of the Penguins as well. 3-2 in overtime. Jays winning their home opener with a 5-2 victory of the Mariners. Game two, that three-game set will go tonight. First pitch, 5-0-7. Chris Bassett scheduled to start. UConn taking the... Men's March Madness final last night. They all last produced 75-60. The Huskies, the first school since 07 to capture back-to-back -back national titles. NBA action resumes tonight. 14 games on the schedule, one of which will see the Raptors at home to the Pacers. USA best in Canada, 1-0 in overtime at the Women's World Hockey Championships yesterday with the win USA top group A. Canada will now face Sweden in quarterfinal action on Thursday. AJHL playoffs continue tonight. Game 7 from Whitecourt between the Wolverines and Canmore Eagles. The winner will advance to face Calgary in the finals. Sports update for Claiborne Services. Take your career to the next level with Claiborne Services. They are hiring all positions, including journeyman bricklayers and apprentices of all levels. Take advantage of their outstanding mentorship program and work with peace of mind knowing that they are an industry leader in safety. For more, visit www.claiborneservices.com or make it easy and give Jeff a call at 780-910-6728. Boom! 
What's going on, everybody? 805, Oilers in action tomorrow, and a big one against the Golden Knights. Vancouver Canucks looming as well. I like vitamin D with a late confession trickling in here today for Spectrum Rental. Guys, confession. I bought one of Hyman's kids' books as a Christmas present for my seven-year-old nephew last year. But when I was wrapping presents, I decided I wanted to keep it. In my defense, Hyman was scoring a lot at that point, and that was vitamin D's secret. <laughs> Great rap on go. that text as well. That's good. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know what's crazy here is uh, somebody just texted me like an Evander King goal song to I Like Big Butts. That was generated by ChatGPT. Uh oh. The lyrics were all done by ChatGPT, and it's uh, actually not uh, bad. Oh, well, of course it's not bad. Everything that ChatGPT touches. Did you grok it? No, I'm not grokking anything. Uh, but I, I gotta. I, here I am in 2024, being like, I gotta look into this ChatGPT AI stuff. Were you guys familiar with this? Nobody's had a bad response though from putting anything into the AI and getting like a. I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, it's never. Sorry, can't it's help always you. gonna give you a banger. Like that's that's where we're at now, and and you're bleep out of luck. Yeah. Artists be damned. Jason Summers says, that song is straight fire. Yes, it is. We usually play it in the uh, 6 o'clock hour. We decided to mix it in a little bit today as well. Crager. Guys, I listen all day long and send in multiple Vegas words for Vegas trip with EST every day. Never picked once. And someone has already qualified twice. Yeah. <laughs> Crager. And if you could see the inbox when the words given out. Yeah. The thing rolls, and it Craig, rolls, and it rolls, We're, we're, we're it talking rolls. thousands of text messages, man. It's, uh... And I mean, some people... There. Keep trying, man. Keep trying. And just like at the old place, there were a few people that would... They'd find themselves on... To, and then some people, yeah. you'd try all the time, and you wouldn't. It's just... And worst case scenario, just blame YouTube, Trev. He's the one who randomly... If you want to have there. a scapegoat, sure, eh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. I blame Zach Tickham. Who, I, <laughs> I also blame Zach Tickham. <laughs> Poor Zach Tickham. Just taking the heat here, eh? Uh, all right, who's playing Kind of Easy Trivia today? Who do we got? Corey. All right, Corey is going to play Kind of Easy Trivia today, trying to win that gift certificate to Mr. Mike's Steakhouse Casual. Casual's place ever in the Hampton Inn on the corner of 137th Ave. And Mark Messier Trail. Nielsen recommendation. Classic Mike Burger with fries. Big loud. The fries, if you are, if you are ordering in and you get Mr. Mike's, you know a lot of places you order in and the fries come and they're, they're soggy? Mr. Mike's fries are never Ever, ever, ever soggy on delivery. It's amazing. I don't know how they do it. Crispy as hell. It's a key in the delivery game, and it's what stands you apart from the rest. 100%. Uh, maybe, uh, some might argue a minor detail, but no a way. pretty big one. When Major you, detail. Yeah, if you know Major the difference. Detail. Yeah. Six o'clock or logger on tap at that Mr. Mike's location as well. All right, let's go to Corey. Needs three out of five correct. Corey, are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. All right, here we go. I'll start the ticker after read the first question. Good luck, man. Which school won Men's March Madness last night? UConn. Who is taller, Zach Eady or YouTube Trev? <laughs> Eady. Did the Blue Jays win their home opener yesterday? Absolutely. What position does Barrios play? Pitcher. Which team is currently first place in the NHL Pacific Division? Dallas. No! No! Oh my God! Damn it, Shake! Stop it! They are going to remember that AM radio is a viable and modern source for news and entertainment. Totally. People don't listen to AM like they used to. Seems like it's more about FM and color TV. That's stupid. It sure is, Kevin. I'm stoked. You stoked? I'm stoked. Just I'm so stoked. stoked. You yeah. cannot come to my house. No, 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 not today. You cannot come to my house. No, 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 not today. Eight oh nine in the morning on the Nielsen Show. Dustin Nielsen and Lieutenant Eric with you. I think right now Tammy is taking Elizabeth to school and Marshall's at home by himself. Cool, watching the show. So uh, Marshall, boys just want to say hi and hope you get better today. Uh, hang in there. Yeah, he'll be watching the show religiously when he's at home. He might even be faking his stomach bug just so he can stay home and watch the show. We've all been there, right? That Confession. might be what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah Marshall, hey, I've done that a few times Marshall, growing up. I get home today, Marshall confesses, Daddy, I'm fine. I'm faking puking just so I can stay home from school. Let's watch his dad. Smart move. Come on. Yeah, I, I, I love that, you, buddy. Right? You'll, get, uh, you'll get better. Get well, get well soon. I want you to get well. Uh, Walking Gage coming up here in about 20 minutes' time. We'll get into the Edmonton Oilers with Gager. 
We'll obviously get into another Red Bull 1-2 finish on the Formula 1 circuit. Do we have to? Yeah, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll get into that. Uh, right now, three questions too many. Lieutenant Eric, do you have a liner for the segment today? I do. Three questions too many brought to you by the outstanding, great staff at Park Mazda, where dealer principal Mitch Lewicki and the entire staff are pumped that the NBA schedule is back in full force later tonight. Park Mazda, your dealer for life. Lakers, Warriors, Suns, Clippers, Nuggets, Jazz, Raps, Pacers. Some good playoff races. Bucks, the, Celtics. The Lakers record yes. right now, even though they're in the play-in spot, mm-hmm. would have put them in third in the conference last year. <laughs> That's how good the Western Conference is this year. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, all the way down to number 10 spot in the Warriors, 43-35. and 35. The Rockets at 11th have a sub-500 record. Yeah, the Warriors are eight games above 500. They're in 10th yeah, right Warriors, now. Yeah, Warriors, 551 winning percentage in 10th. Quite and a playoff we'll, race, man. And in the East, uh, 551 for the Heat, and they're in 8th, so... Celtics Bucks, so that's a big one. That's a... Do you have a Twitter account? At Lieutenant underscore Eric. You can follow uh, on Twitter. If you so choose, you can follow. You can mute as well. If, <laughs> if my mute list ever gets out, people are going to be like, what the hell is going on with this guy? Well, it's, I was telling you the other day. Mute's I've, the best. I've muted a bunch of accounts. Yeah. And it's made my Twitter experience so much better. I have everything muted. I don't even have a thread. Like, I, you go in the home thing, and there's just nothing there. It's just, <laughs> you got it. Oh, nothing happening it's in the world uh, today. just myself and Groke hanging out. <laughs> uh, and also, if you wanted to see the uh, the huge addition to our EST office yesterday, I'm not going to tell you what it is. If you missed it, too bad for you. But uh, visit our uh, Edmonton Sports Talk Twitter account at YEG Sports Talk, and you'll see the uh, well, the safety and visual. I, I think it's, look, you, you got this thing, and I think there is a little thought in mind as well in terms of the color, the pattern and the fit it's 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 good it's not just a safety sometimes in workplaces it's like ah safety and you you, know, you put a first aid kit and you just slam it on the thing or this isn't a first aid kit but this fits with the room this ties in it's a it's a rug <laughs> well it's a mat it's a mat two mats now in the uh, yeah, office yeah it's, it's a it's a little mat but boy does it do its job hey it's just the size that we need now there's no longer fear of us tripping over the cable falling and breaking our necks or even worse Knocking down the camera. Now uh, you trip you over the mat, you blame Matt. Yeah, that, that's nice too. I remember the first time HR Daddy came into this office, he Uh-oh. looked at those cables and he goes, well, you got to clean that up. Right away. I'm like, Dad, look at what we built. He's like, clean those cables up. What? Well, whenever we take like, a on. photo from in here and post online, there are a few people like that have severe anxiety about the... Uh... Well, then come by and fix the cables. <laughs> this is how we have to operate. This is how we have to do it. Come by and fix the cables. You should have saw the old place. Oh, my God. <laughs> that it's, was... a, it's amazing that Bell Building didn't burn down at some point. <laughs> really? And nothing to do with me and toasters. Yeah. All right. Uh, give him a follow, Lieutenant underscore Eric. Question number one. I didn't know that this was a day, but, but everything kind of has a day. Oh, yeah. It's National Unicorn Day. Hmm. Who would you guys say is the biggest unicorn in all of sports right now? It's got to be hockey, and it's got to be Tage Thompson. <laughs> Wow, that's a quick answer. That's... You've been waiting to drop some Tage Thompson love all season because he's been having a very mediocre year. You're going with DuPont, aren't you? <laughs> no, I mean, I was... <laughs> First and... defenseman, WHO, exceptional status. Come on. I, I think the answer, you have to go to the NBA. And... Yeah, well, uh, Wimbenyama, uh, of yeah. course. Yeah, that's definitely what I was thinking. I totally wasn't thinking... A guy who's doing things that have never been done in a 21 year career well. in his 21st season. I mean, that is unicornish. Yeah. Like when you look at everybody else who's played that long, nobody else has really contributed at all in any sort of significant way. And LeBron's still putting up 25, 26 points a night, eight rebounds. Yeah, I guess that's seven unicorn. assists. Like that's, you, you, that's points you can make to. Yeah. Like we've never seen anybody play this well in that season, and you will never see anybody play that well in that season ever again. So it is a unicorn thing. But when Binyama has to be the unicorn here. But it's a fun question. If you're listening on TuneIn or iHeart or EdmontonSportsTalk.com right now or watching on YouTube, biggest unicorn in sports today. Who is it? Who jumps? I mean, you can make uh, Connor McDavid's a freak. Connor McDavid is very unicornish. He's well, not mean, leading the league in scoring. He's not running away with a scoring title or anything, but there's a significant case to be made for the level of hockey that Connor McDavid plays. Otani flies in as as he sh- if he was pitching. I mean, that's kind of if the, Otani that, that's was the healthy and pitching right now, hundred percent. Um, Jokic, McJesus says on the nasty chat, easy unicorn. He says, I, easy. Well, Jokic is 
Yeah, he's a freak for a big man. His ability big to pass, man, yes. his ability to shoot. He does hit some unicornish shots when he's when you know when he faces contended shots outside the arc. He has this freak ability to kind of just heave it up from behind well, his head. And I think on that theme, we have to shots. include Luka Doncic as well then. And some of the stuff that he can pull off. Give given the fact and what he looks, we've always said he looks like the guy on the street. And to be some of the moves that he pulls off, I think, is is unicornish. The the finger roll he had from the three point line I've never seen happen no. in my life. But again, he's not like an athletic freak of nature either, so it's kinda maybe the last guy you'd pick if you didn't know any better, but what say you? A lot of you are saying Otani. Yeah. Otani prior to this season when he's not pitching right now. Yes. He was your agree. resident unicorn, but yeah. maybe right now also it's... very unicornish that could be involved in a massive, massive gambling <laughs> scandal yes. that's just been pushed under the rug because yeah. he didn't know that somebody stole four point five million dollars from him. Eat your heart out, Pete Rose. So right? that's pretty good. And still play. That, and, that's that's the unicorn part of it. Yeah. <laughs> MJS is in and says uh, unicorns are real. Like back in the back in the day, uh, we're, uh, like, crypt- cryptozoology chat here. Is that what we're doing? I can, uh, I'll, I'll see you here. The unicorns used to be a thing, and then people were just like, "Screw it, this looks weird. We'll knock off the horn. They can just be a horse." Well, humans used to have tails, didn't they? Not. I mean, it's kind of probably things take lots of years to kind of grow out of you. Lots. Imagine of years. the final unicorn. You just had like a nub. <laughs> you like, damn like, it! And why hanging, can I? <laughs> and he's hanging on. He's like oh. the worst generation of unicorns. Like, trying to make it grow. <laughs> my daddy used to have a, a ten incher. <laughs> no, I look at me. I, <laughs> It'd be a little nub, little nubby unicorn. <laughs> All right, biggest unicorns in sports right now. 780-218-9999. Trey Ford? Is that from Iwanek? <laughs> Did Iwanek send that in? He can, he can throw, he can catch, he can run. I'm going to go off the board. Okay. Joey Chestnut, 76 hot dogs mm. and buns. 2021. And he can choke guys near, un, near unbeatable. Near unbeatable. Joey Chestnut out of nowhere. <laughs> I like it. Uh, Giant Mike says, McDavid is a stud horse. I think a unicorn is just that there's nothing like them. Might even be slower than a stud horse. So that's good. Yeah. I also like Jason over in the nasty chat saying Jason Kelsey. <laughs> a true unicorn. Somebody you really like. Caitlin Clark. Calgary Glenn comes in with that one. And uh, another one for Otani. Otani, gambler, batter, and of course, will pitch again. So we've got that going for us. Uh, I, yeah. Let's move along, or else I'll just start talking about LeBron again. But it is, it's very unicornish. Like, he's doing something that has never been done and probably won't be done again. Spencey Five Cents, he says, Verstappen. Well, but Lewis Hamilton dominated for years as well, so... Is he dominating, though, in the, in the, in the malaise fashion that we're like, I mean, Max, it's just the car, the driver, the... Yeah, I don't think you look at a unicorn and go, wow, that's boring. Okay, yeah. And, you know, it I kind of you. is with Formula One and Max right now. Well, we'll get into that with Gager when he joins us. Question number two. Oh, this will get this will get everybody hockey aroused here. Oh boy, this is good. Do you think Knobloch is trending towards twenty nine and ninety seven together to open up the playoffs? Well, could be. Yes, yes, I'll say yes. Do you think that's where it's headed? Sure. I don't. <laughs> we'll get into it with uh, we'll get into it with Gager. Let me write this down so we can hit on it with Gager. YouTube, Trav. Do you think that's where they're headed right now? I don't think so. Like he separated them in the third period in the Battle of Alberta because they weren't getting anything done. So like you can't really fault the guy. Like nothing's really clicking. Um, so I, I don't think that's the the recipe for success. Uh, when we saw, you know, he first came in, that wasn't what he was doing. Um, he's been forced that hand because nothing else is really working. But ideally, I I, I think he he'd like to. He'd be the first to say like, no, I want to split them up, but. Nothing's really working, so he's kind of been forced that hand. I, I don't think that's the case, and I don't want it to be the case. So puck drop, opening night of the playoffs, first round against the Kings of the Golden Knights. What's the line? You're asking me? Uh, yeah. well, I, I think they're going to be separated. You think so? Yeah. But a fluid situation, but I, I would The next shift, it could be. <laughs> yeah, I would like, not be surprised if by the end of that game, they're back together. Depending on the situation. Yeah. yeah. I think maybe we all just have to accept that in this city. And is that such a... Like, that... I know you look at the stars, too, and you can say, oh, they know where they are. I, I think I coined it the perfect Tetris game where everything's in, in the piece and it should be. I love Tetris. But, but So what if you have a fluid lineup? And if you have different ideas and, and options, I guess we could say. Like maybe that's just like the I, way the Edmonton Oilers have to win the Stanley Cup. Maybe. It, it, it's not written in stone that you have to do it with a, with a set every night and everybody needs to be where they are. I mean, maybe, I, maybe things are easier in terms of communication and knowing where you need to be. But People do imagine that 
you just roll the same four lines for the entire playoffs and roll your way to a victory. That's not if the Edmonton Oilers do win the Stanley Cup. That's not how it's going to happen. I don't think that's how it's going to happen. Not how this is built. I don't eh? think you put McDavid and Drysdale on separate lines and they just stay that way the entire playoffs. That's not how the Edmonton Oilers have ever been handled by a head coach in the history of McDavid and Drysdale. So. I don't know. Do you think it has to be that way? 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. Or hit us up in the nasty chat as well for your uh, your thoughts on that one. Question number three. I saw this come up in the nasty chat earlier, so I took it. What do you guys think The Rock put in Cody Rhodes' hand last night? Did you watch this? I don't know anything I, that you I did PVR... I did, I did, well, actually, I didn't PVR it when it came on at 6. I PVR'd it at 10. Then I watched it a little bit. Will you also be watching, do you watch SmackDown this week as well? Post uh, the mania? Is that, no, we're done now. I've never been SmackDown. Guy. It's the hype. Cool. So, anyway, The Rock comes out last night. Cena was there as well. Oh. Apparently, Cena is stepping away from acting to take one more run in the WWE. Okay. So that's going to throw a wrench Stepping away from acting? So, like, The Rock <laughs> and Cena are both weaseling their way back into WWE right now. Which is going to throw I a like real how big he's wrench stepping away from acting. Yeah, though. yeah. <laughs> it's, but well, it's, this is all it. Fair <laughs> enough. When you just drop a great character like Ricky Stanicki, I think you need to make it known that you know, there's not going to be a Ricky Stanicki sequel. But it's all for an at least act. A couple of years. It's all an act. <laughs> oh, okay. That, yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I see what you're saying. <laughs> that. Um, but yeah, so The Rock comes out, and I don't know the history between him and Rhodes, but The Rock. It was. It was kind of. I even saw some people being like, "Ah, this is kind of a lame bit," but The Rock comes out. Pulls something out of his pocket like he's about to take Vontae Mack no matter what. <laughs> yeah. Pulls this out of his pocket, and you don't see it. Puts it in Cody's hands and said something along the lines of, you don't even need to look at this to know what it is. <laughs> don't you ever break my heart again. And then Rhodes took it. He didn't see it again, and he put it in his pocket. So now there's a lot of speculation on what did he give him. Uh, well, according I, I, according I t- to the official yeah. We Want Cody account, um, what they say, Diddy's USB flash drive, Ooh. his dad's original Rolex. It doesn't matter what he gave it him. Does it? That's a good one. I mean, this is one of those uh, wrestling again. Does it? You know, the big mystery and and leaving the audience to to come to their own conclusions, which is which is you know the storyline here. But did did we ever find out? Will we ever no, find I don't out? Think that, ever knows. That, so that's I perfect, saw yeah. some people saying that it, it was a lighter or matches because. The ro- the rocket lit Cody Rhodes' bus on fire or something? <laughs> okay. I don't know what they do with buses in WWE, but this is nuts. Uh, I like this one from AT Penny Packer. It was a twenty dollar gift card to Hudson's. <laughs> <laughs> I want I want Tommy to start doing that down at Hudson's where he, you don't see it. He folds it up, puts it in your hand. You don't even have to. Know what this is. You don't have to look at it. And people are like, well, Tommy, it's obviously a gift certificate to Hudson's. Like, what and are then we he doing just here? gives a wink and walks away. That should be the play moving forward for Tom in the GC uh, distribution. I tweeted out last night that it was the uh, recipe for the new EST birdie juice, which is on the way, which is a good one. But <laughs> vodka blue. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, vodka blue fruit. <laughs> there you go. Mix that works. Uh, that's a funny text from AG Pennypacker. The Rock was giving him a $20 gift card to Hudson's. Could get into the mix and text of the day today. Mm. Uh, it could. Anyway, if you have any suggestions, I don't, I don't know what it would have been. I mean, I don't follow it enough to know what The Rock put in his hand, like an advanced screening of Jumanji 3 on the USB, something like that. Are they doing a Jumanji 3? They must. The first two are smash hits. Uh, maybe. Anyway, wrong answers only. To uh, 780-218-9999, 780-218-9999. Jimmy Onishi in the nasty chest says, Cena never left. Is that because you couldn't see him? Yeah, I, I, That's the whole. I'm just getting on board with the Cena thing. You're loving it. How old, yeah. how old is this bit? But I'm just getting on board with it. <laughs> Going around doing the suck it to everybody and doing the Cena thing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> hey, what do you think Your about kid this? Get all over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be good. Uh, all right, your reaction to 780-218-9999. If you missed it on the show earlier today, Craig Button has written off the Vegas Golden Knights. He's not buying them. He's not buying them. He said he's not buying the Vegas Golden Knights. He, he didn't say if he was table. selling them. He may have been in a hold position, which I know now because I've watched some movies on stock oh. markets and stuff. Wait for the river. Might have been in a hold position. We'll see what ends up playing out. Let's bring in uh, Joaquin Gage. 
one of the guys on the Pit Stop Pals, one of the guys on Two Guys and Goalie, which we'll get to a little bit later on today. Uh, Gager would know things about buying, selling, and holding, I mm. I believe, as well. Uh, Gager, would you be buying, selling, or holding the Vegas Golden Knights right now like Craig Button? I'd be holding, Dusty, as uh, the immortal words of, of Ric Flair, since this is a wrestling show today. Uh, to be the man, you got to beat the man. And I hate to agree with Matthew Wanick, but all roads go through Vegas to get to where the Oilers want to be. Woo. Rhodes, was that also a wrestling reference? Because of Cody Rhodes. That worked out really well, Gager. You're on yeah. fire today. Absolutely on fire this morning. Gager's brought to you by Pro-Am Sports. Uh, it is car flake season, and uh, they've got those for you at Pro-Am Sports. Swing on by their location. Pop in there, St. Albert Trail, 128th Ave, and uh, get your car flags right now. Gager, were you ever were you a wrestling guy at any point? What was your generation? It was well. It was uh, it was NWA actually. Like I remember when that first came out, when Ric Flair and then the WWF. Obviously, um, I was shocked at the NWA because or the because they had matches for an hour on a Friday night. Like you'd see <laughs> Dusty Rhodes beat the crap out of Ric Flair for an hour, and then you know Arn Anderson would give him a roll of quarters and and he'd hit him and and Dusty'd go down. So. Um, yeah, that, that was kind of my air. And then of course, when the rock came in and I so cold my, and so cold when, when I remember a cab ride with one of my friends one time, it got pretty annoying, but he kept asking our cab driver things. And he must've said, as soon as the cab driver answered, he said, it doesn't matter what you think. And he must've <laughs> did it. 20 times and i was going he's the cab driver is not picking up on this he's keeps trying to answer us so it was, uh, old, old jeff almer i think he's the uh he's the uh he's the play, director of player personnel with the canucks or with abbotsford now so very funny man <laughs> just when you get to a bit where it's it's got stupid but gets back to being funny again those are always yeah. the best bits. Family Guy they basically does that like nine times a season. <laughs> so that's something that you could definitely uh, definitely get to. Uh, Gager, do you think they uh, – we were asked during three questions here. Do you think Knobloch is trending towards 29 and 97 together to open the playoffs? Or do you think he tries to get them on separate lines to open up a playoff series? Um, I think it depends on who they play. I think uh, – I. I if they play the Kings, I think you can put them together, Dusty. I think it's a it's a it's harder for them to handle um, because the Kings' defense it's not as strong as Vegas. I, I would if they play Vegas first round, then I I might want to see them apart just because of the strength of of the Golden Knights back end and trying to find the right matchups because with those like those top three guys that they have. Um, you're going to see Petrangelo or Hannafin on McDavid, and, and it just it negates them a little bit in, in some in some sense. I I think anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, so Kings, I put them together, nights apart. But then it's always about trying to find that chemistry, right? I don't. I think you're just going to you're going to see them together at times, apart at times, um, and, and that's good too. Keeping teams on their toes a little bit, right? Um, we've seen in the past with the Knights, they, they did seem to just stick with their lines and go with, they didn't care, right? You, last year, you saw them start their fourth line against McDavid and Drysaddle at times. That's a, that's a confident team, but this year, I th it might be a little bit different. Gager, I guess in terms of, and you mentioned the Oilers' options there, and, and certainly situational depending on the opponent, but we were kind of going back and forth earlier. Uh, let's let's look at the situation. Predators, Golden Knights, and Kings. How would you rank those three in terms of who you would want as an Oilers fan, player, or whatever, uh, in terms of who you want to whom you'd want to avoid the most of those three? Well, it's always a progression when you're in the playoffs. You, you're, <clears throat> you're obviously building towards something. Um, I, I like the Oilers going into a matchup where, you know, it's, they're not the, the favorite. And I think if they were to play the Nashville Predators in this market anyway, uh, it would be talking about how Leon Dreisaitl has feasted on that team for the past five years, right? And it's a, it's a series where Edmonton's obvious the favorite, 
Um, but they there's some good there's some good pieces on that Nashville team. I know they've been struggling a little bit lately, but um, with Soros, Riosi, Forsberg, th- that's a good team, and they're playing well right now. And I don't like that matchup for the Oilers. I'd rather see them play. Uh, be quite frank, I I would love them to play the Vegas Golden Knights in the first round, healthy. Um, I know they get hurdle back, but this is a guy that's got to get accustomed to the new systems, find his place within the lineup uh, before game 83 here. I just, and the amount of hockey that the Golden Knights have played over the last few years, I just think it it's it sets up a lot better to go into a matchup where you're hungry to beat the guys that beat you before and you're facing a team that's, you know, they're, they've, uh, they've limped to the finish line. So. A little fat and happy as well from when, I mean, you know, they've, They've done what they had to do, in a sense, and the Oilers still happened. You could have that mental advantage, perhaps. You got it. Yeah, that's. Um, I I just think they're ripe. I don't. I don't think this city could handle either outcome of a Oilers Golden Knights. Like if they lose to them, it's it's the end well, of the world. Like it, it, like they meet them in the first round, and lose to them, it is the absolute end of the world. And if they beat the Golden Knights, it is full blown. Might as well have a parade after the first round. Like it'll be, <laughs> it'll be that'll be something, man. If we get Oilers Golden Knights first round playoff matchup, which is still very much a possible thing, uh, that's going to be amazing. It's going to be absolutely amazing for these two teams to uh, to go at it. Uh, Gage, your thoughts on the Oilers coming out of the weekend? Colorado, Calgary, uh, pick up a couple of wins in a couple of different ways against a couple of different levels of opponents, but. What would the confidence level be at right now for this group after the bounce back from getting torched by the stars just the uh, you know just under a week ago? That was that's what I wanted to see, and I think that's what we talked about mostly last Thursday on two guys. Dusty is how are they going to respond? That's what I wanted to see. What are they going to do against the uh, it, against the Colorado Avalanche? And that was a huge response. They uh, watching that game. And I don't think the Avalanche had their had their best stuff, but the Oilers didn't allow them to get anything going. That was a masterful performance. The fact that um, the maturity level of this team is really shining through, where they can they can park a subpar performance. Because let's face it, you know you're looking at an extra what twenty three to twenty five more games added to this season. You ha- your your memory has to be really really short. It it helps playing every second day. But the fact that they did it against two of the, arguably, two of the favorites to win the Cup this year is is really impressive. And, you know, uh, going into uh, the, the Calgary game, um, I was worried a little bit. I've talked about it before, that emotional letdown of, of, of beating a, a top team. Um, it wasn't the Oilers' best stuff, but they uh, their skill level was able to pull them through that game and uh, even with the uh, with the with the antics on the bench between players, they they still managed to get the the two points. Uh, and we'll dive into the antics on the the bench between players definitely more on two guys with you and Cass later on today. Um, but you know the the thought process here is these guys are trying to hold Kane accountable. Multiple different guys have done it because they know that they need him to get going come playoff time. Gager, uh, how much of the others' playoff success or failures do you think? come down to the impact that Evander Kane can make for them on a regular basis in the playoffs. He is of the, of the puzzle that needs to be created to win a Stanley cup His his is a pretty big piece. Like that's, you got to fit him in and, and he, he's going to have to have influence over the course of a long playoff run and be an integral part in certain games. Right. But he's, he's built for, for this type of game. I think, when when you get into the, the the best of seven series, the the hatred that you build playing against a person, um, we saw what happened last year against the Golden Knights, and they kind of won that that mental battle. Um, now I think with 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 the additions of Carrick, Perry, and, and Kane, they they allow they allow the Oilers to get into the minds of the other teams, so they're not just thinking about the game; they're thinking about oh. I want to get this player back. Things like that. They have to park things. You can't be what like what Drysaddle did with, with uh, with <laughs> rats. Oh God, that guy drives me crazy. But that was a vicious slash that took him off both his feet. That was amazing. But they have to park those feelings, right? They have to. They can't 
take a number, uh, do it clean. Uh, depending on the situation of the game, get someone back. But uh, you can't be losing players, and you can't be in the, sitting in the box for five minutes. You know, it's funny when we talk about these other guys. We like, you know what you're going to get from Ekholm, I think. You know what you're going to get from McDavid and Drysdale and Hyman for sure. Button today, after he said he's not buying the Vegas Golden Knights heading into the playoffs, he did say that the Oilers, a lot of their success will come down to if Darnell Nurse can get his game to where it needs to be. Gager, where do you think Nurse's game is at right now? And how important does, like, if Darnell Nurse has a great playoff, do the Oilers win the Stanley Cup? Like, does he have that type of impact on this group? That's a that's a good question. Does he have the game to 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 raise his level like to be the to difference maker? Can, right, like he's got to he's got to put a two month span together, Dusty. Whereas if it happened during the regular season, you would consider him to be a Norris Trophy candidate, right? That that's that's the type of play Darno Nurse has to find. Um, look, Ekholm. And and Nurse are going to be out there, better part of sixty minutes throughout throughout the playoffs. Um, he has to be that. I, I I've made this comparison before. I'm not doing it, but Pronger esque, where you know we we had Mac T on our show years ago, and he was talking about the the luxury of putting out Chris Pronger, where you just knew the the other team wasn't going to score when he was on the ice. That's where Darnell Nurse has to get to. Any sort of momentum, he's got to be a momentum killer for the other team because there's going to be ebbs and flows of the game. He's got to be able to nip that in the bud, get the puck going the other way, and just squash um, any any advantage the other teams have at certain points of the game. Joaquin Gage with us, former Edmonton Oiler on the Two Guys and a Goalie podcast, and of course right here on the Nielsen Show as well. Uh, Gager, let's put on our Pit Stop Pals hats for a second here. Uh, Red Bull cruising to another one, two. What's the rest of the story look like coming out of Japan? Um, well, if we start at the back of the pack, um, I don't think Danny Ricardo is going to be in, in that RB cash app seat for very much longer. Um, after thorough review of his helmet cam, that was, that was his fault. Just not being aware. The fact that they went to the hard tires off the start was, was a little bit puzzling too. being that far back. I know he, was going to try to decide to go long, but even oh, then, that's why he got know torched have... straight off the top, right? Like four or five cars yeah. blew right by him because he's on the hards. But, but you you know that you know you're going to get torched off the off the line, but then you got to be aware of where everyone is, and just just a huge mistake by him. Um, moving forward, uh, Fernando Alonso said something really uh, that that struck me as interesting. It, it, you don't know what where Fernando is going to go. He says he's enjoying racing. And he, he said this race was was really like he felt really good about it, but at the end of the day, he's still forty seconds behind the leader. So yeah. it, it's it's not that enjoyable, not battling at the front. Um, who knows with the uh, with what's going to happen when when Honda takes over at Aston Martin with that that power uh, power unit? That's one one of the reasons Max is thinking. Well, if we don't have this power unit, am I going to stay at Red Bull? Um, and Total Wolf keeps praising Max like crazy. Um, and Max said it's really Total saying some really nice things about me. So um, <laughs> flirting is on. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, the the court the courtship for Max um, still with a little bit of turmoil and Red Bull is is interesting. But let's face it, Dusty, those uh, Checo is uh, he said is looks to get something done what he'll know for sure in the next month if he's going to keep that seat which is and if he keeps performing like that I don't see why uh Christian Horner wouldn't sign him up for for another year and and be dominant again um but we'll see the the silly season is is close um but this this race in China is going to be interesting it's a very very cool track if you if actually if you go on the website you can see Kimi Raikkonen talk about in in just like he's so exuberant when he talks about racing on that track it's uh it really captures you Gage, well i was going to ask you about shanghai and just quickly like thoughts two weeks out i mean traditionally is this can we just expect another energy drink dominance type of weekend or or does shanghai provide a little bit of something else for the neutral traditionally there's there's some interesting corners in in china from what i see very like tight hairpins uh slow s turns and they're like we saw in 
in in Japan, those free flowing S turns. So this will be a little bit different. Um, Mercedes, I don't think this car is. I think they're just going to fall away until yeah. they they get to Imola. Is when the the first upgrades for their car come. Uh, very, again, it was. Uh, they seemed to start the weekend off right. Uh, there was uh, seeing where they were after some free practice. They didn't get a free practice too, but uh, all signs were looking to where the, the car was going to be closer to Ferrari. But again, just um, bad choices. Um, I don't know. I I have Mercedes in my pools at times because I think they're <laughs> going to turn it around. But I think that's it. I, I can't. Cass is far too... Cass is basically max and, and Checo right now he's, i think he's uh, cheating he's i don't dominating. know how but he's cheating i think <laughs> yeah it's it's awful it's absolutely awful but Get- then another thing that caught my eye was uh the return of vettel possibly they were talking yeah about what's him. up with that where's that coming from so, i don't know there's just total dropped it and he uh he said any team would be lucky to have vettel as as one of their drivers and that seat's still open and uh and he's around all the time too so this is uh, it would be interesting to see uh, El Sebastian Vettel get back into F1, and, and he, I think he fit quite nice in that Mercedes seat. Gager, as always, buddy, we appreciate it. We'll catch up on two guys a little bit later on. Can't wait. All right, there you go. That's Joaquin Gage brought to you by Pro-Am Sports. Get your car flags today in at Pro-Am. I don't know how Gager disconnects so quickly. That's amazing. It's like, financial, man. He's, I don't he's... even have time to mute him. He's gone <laughs> that before was... I open up the window. Like, what the heck? I literally said, okay, Gager, thanks for the time to talk to you on two guys. Trev opens up the window. He's gone. He's a magician. That's freaky to me. I do like Vettel doing the Undertaker. Like in for <laughs> like just, just rolling back in now. Just appears on the sudden. grid. The lights go out, and then there he is on the grid. Wouldn't that be something? Uh, all right, so here's the, here's a question coming out of this conversation with a walking gauge on the Edmonton Oilers. Darnell Nurse, positive or negative impact? What's it going to be? Well, it, it's interesting. I was just going to try to go a little bit more generic with it because we asked the same type of question about Evander Kane. So let's throw this out there. And I know it's going to be... I'm probably eliminating too many names here, but outside of McDavid, Dreisaitl, Ekholm, Skinner, and I'm going to put 50 Goldman Zach Heim in there. You know what you're going to get from those guys. Outside of those five guys, which Edmonton Oiler needs to or could have the biggest impact on a Stanley Cup championship? Outside of Ekholm, McDavid, Dreisaitl, Skinner, and Hyman. Nuge is eligible for this conversation. Bouchard is eligible for this conversation. Darnell Nurse and Evander Kane are eligible for this conversation. I'm not sure if anybody else actually would factor in. Um, But answer that for us. 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. Or hit us up in the nasty chat today. By the way, you got 17 minutes left in the show. Probably only about 10 minutes till we get to the sound of the day. We're at 330 likes, which oh. is great, but will not get you whatever clip you want from the vault. So if you're watching right now, <sighs> hammer the thumbs up. We're trying to make it 400 likes three days in a row. We've got our first ever two-day streak. We're trying to extend it to three. Crank it up a notch, all right? Who's the answer to that? And and just, again, your question was... Out, outside, outside of, of players, yeah. Outside of Hyman, yeah. Nuge, Skinner, McDavid, Drysdale, and Ekholm, which Edmonton Oiler will f- needs, needs to. to? Yeah, they, like which Oiler, if they win, has the biggest impact on a Stanley Cup championship? Is it Nurse? Is it Bouchard? See, is yeah. it Nuge? Is it Kane? Framing the question is, I think, I think needs Nuge and if Nuge and Hopkins could really find like a, I mean, then then we're talking about options in in a center. I mean, then you're kind of that that really becomes a lot more fluid and a lot more options for Knobloch. Um, looking at the back end, obviously, I mean, Bouchard, a well-rounded game, both offensively and defensively, would be it would be a huge boon as well. I think when we talk about impacts as well, and I mentioned Nurse, like, we always think impacts in a positive fashion. I, I think with Nurse, maybe maybe some people out there, and, and again, maybe this is just based on on, on what we've seen from him, but you would, you'd be more inclined to think that he's going to make a negative impact more so than a positive one. I'm going to put this up on Twitter as a poll, but I'm just going to put Nurse, Nuge, and Kane because I know if I put Nuge Bouchard up there, a bunch of people are going to come after me and be like, why is Bouchard even in this poll? So I don't need that heat today on Twitter. So I'm just putting up Nurse, Nuge, and Kane. Which Oiler needs to play the best for the Oilers to win the Stanley Cup? Nurse, Nuge, Kane. Simple question. 
We'll see where the votes come in. It's now been posted over on Twitter at Nielsen TSN 1260. What's your answer to this? Pitwall Nasty says, Sam Gagne. <laughs> that's, uh, that's kind of funny. Coach Mike says, Nurse can't have four assists and be minus two in 11 games like last year's playoffs. YouTube, Trev, where do you come out on this? Let's, let's eliminate Bouchard from the conversation. Let's just say, like, Bouchard... You should know what you're going to get with Bouchard. He's going to be brilliant offensively. He's going to be a big part of the power play, and he's going to play five-on-five five with Matias Ekholm, so everything should be okay. Which Oiler needs to play the best for the Oilers to win the Stanley Cup out of Nurse, Nuge, and Kane? A lot of those options, like as far as covering you know, everything, like I think Nuge, he does a lot more than like as, as far as forwards go, right? Like you can have him on the penalty kill. He can chime in offensively. Um, he's really complimentary, really good complimentary player. But I mean, when Evander Kane's buzzing, like he's, it's impressive to watch. Like two seasons ago in the playoffs, he got 13 goals and 15 playoff games. He like almost averaging. That a goal. was insane. That was a great it, run. And so like, if you're getting that from Evander Kane and if Hyman's doing what he's been doing all season long, you got Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, obviously they, they show up in the playoffs, but I don't think Nuge will ever bring that those offensive numbers. Um, it, Nuge will touch on the things like the defensive play, like Evander Kane wouldn't, you know, not so much won't be doing that. But I mean, if you're if you get even uh, well, I wouldn't say half, but like if you get eighty percent of that year's Evander Kane, like that that would just be that would be huge. Like that would that would you know like that would just it, it would be insane. Like, that, like I don't know what team would have. Uh, like to to counter with that when you already have Zach Hyman, Connor McDavid, and Leon Draisaitl. So I'd I'd like to think that Evander Kane, if if he plays at that rate, like it's it's a game changer. Early, very early results, very early results in this poll. We're talking like fifty votes in. Eighty percent of the vote is for Darnell Nurse. Eight percent of the vote is for Nuge. Ten percent of the vote is for Kane. Which. To me, those results are a little more overwhelming for Darnell Nurse than I was expecting. Early days, though. We'll, we'll wait for that thing to settle, but that's a... Uh, Leaf in the replies it says, there's got to be Nurse just because of his time on ice. And uh, Cam replies and says, this one stumped me. Nurse doesn't have a legitimate top 4D partner. He can do this part, but it might not show if CC plays bad. So I'd say both of them as a unit need to be the key. So that's another way that you can uh, another way that you can look at it as well. 780-218-9999. Guys, can you remember a game where Nurse played really well and we lost? I can't. I think if he's having a good game, we are winning. Of course, Tommy, if you're on the way in, I'm reading that text with the we. It's not me adding the we, so please don't give me the side eye when you come into the uh, the office today. Um, guys, whenever I think of playoff news, it reminds me of him and Monaghan's fight in the playoffs. That was true playoff intensity. That one's in from Raj this morning as well. Jen says, Kane won't do much. She's not that guy anymore. Too worried about wrecking his pearly whites. Now, he's a handsome man, but he's a handsome man, and he's fought a lot in his career, and he's still handsome. So. Yep. But we're talking a lot with his game in the past now, I find. Like, you know, two, if, oh, if he could only... Well, you the know, two if, years ago, oh, like, you know, if they, had, if they had Curry and Gretzky, like, you know, that's like, yeah, but it's two years ago. Uh, the Life of Brian on Twitter says, it's Nurse, but he won't. And see, and like, that's the thing. Like, I think that's why I didn't pick Nurse, is I, I think... I'd love for that, but I... So are you worried about Nurse in the playoffs? I'm not worried, but, like, I just... I've always... And I feel like a lot of Oilers fans fair, have... We'd expect a more negative impact than a positive one. Just yeah. from what, like... Yeah. You have and, that feeling inside of you. Yeah, and, and it sucks, because, like, I feel like he's got all the tools in the toolbox you need to be just... And especially in the playoffs. Like, there's... He's in very rare company with defensemen that... He's one of the biggest defensemen in the league, and he also skates as good as any defenseman. And you don't get it. And I, I thought recently, like, he had been playing his best hockey in quite some time. Uh, he was jumping up on the rush when, and he wasn't cheating on anything. And, you know, recently it's been kind of biting him. But, you know, I just, it sucks. It, it just, it's never clicked. And I, I hope it does, but I'm not, I don't know if I will. Keep these rolling in, and uh, we'll continue to, uh, We'll continue to sort through it. Definitely a conversation I'm going to get to on uh, two guys and a goalie today because it's a good one. This is a, this is a good conversation. I like this. Um, you are so close 
to 400 likes and getting a clip. So close that I would say we got four hundred yesterday. As we get it, yeah, we have four hundred after the fact. We're gonna get to four hundred after the fact with people rewatching the show. So I'm gonna give you the clip. So what clip do you want? Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine, or hit us up in the nasty chat. I've got all of our top ten songs from like the last decade, or all of our top ten sounds from last decade. I'm looking at Dirk singing USA right now. I found that one. That was always a classic. Down, down in the remember that one? Ah, Really good. I like that. That was always a good one. Uh, so what clip would you like to find, and uh, we'll do it for you, because we're going to hit 400. By the time, the, uh, whoever, and there's a lot of you who watch the show later in the day, hammer that thumbs up when you're watching a little bit later on in the day, and uh, we can get there. We can get there. So we'll do we'll do a clip for you. What do you want to hear? I got Cave is simply the best just sitting here in front of me right now. I mean, that one, you can never go wrong with that. We might have to roll that one out here. Your suggestions, though, 780-218-9999. Hit us up in the uh, the nasty chat. Penner's Pancake says, Holloway song, Cavus, or Built This Smitty. I think a lot of people like some Cavus this morning. It's not a bad idea. Let's get into the rap for William Huff. If you want your place to look as good as ours, and a lot of people, the buzz in here when they come in, they say, wow, this place looks great. And I say, thank you. the first thing they say. William Huff. They, yeah. Triple W dot William Huff dot com. Bruce and his A team over there, the dream team. They've been doing this since 1972. People like to claim that that United States basketball team was the original dream team. But let's be honest. It was William Huff. Mm. William Huff dot com. Uh, all your pull ups and everything you need to just make things look sharp. They'll get it done for you at William Huff. Eric, what would you learn on the show today? Uh, John Rom. Uh, he admitted he misses playing against PGA Tour competition. Of course he does. He took the bag to go to live and play against a bunch of bums. Nobody was telling him at the time, right? Like it's it's not like he was I, I love that Rom is also sitting there going, I think Liv needs to go to seventy two holes. Well, but he's also he he had it he is uh he is uh, happy with Liv Golf. So. <laughs> I don't feel bad for John Rom missing the competition. I don't feel bad for John Rom wanting to play seventy two round seventy two hole golf again. You made this decision, you got your half billion dollars, shut up and play on the live tour. Yeah. It's you're rich. <laughs> That's it's really. Rich. I mean, I'm sorry. It's I, I don't care what you say and how sad you are that you're not competing against. You you made your you made your bed now lay in it. Isn't that what they say? I think so. He's trying to have his cake and then eat it too, which I still don't necessarily understand as a reference, but I like to mix it in every once in a while. That wasn't me on the Wii, Tommy. You come down with your Wii's. Don't you worry about me. Uh, all right, let's get to your. Sound of actually, I did. I had this loaded. Oh, I might have lost it. I had it loaded, but then I went and posted that poll. I had the uh, I'm going to bring up the sound of the rock when he handed that thing to Cody Rhodes just because it does lead well to some of the text messages that we had. Let me uh, let me pop this up for you in a sec. This is this is what he said when he handed him the thing. Here we go. You don't even have to open your hand to know. What this is. What? Don't you ever break my heart again. <laughs> how, dr- how dramatic is that? What is this? You don't did- even have to open your hand to know what this is. Don't you ever break did my heart again. Kiss? I like the person who suggested that he was handing him a list of his CFL stats. You don't even have to open <laughs> your hand to know what this is. Don't you ever break my heart again. I'm going to save that because we could definitely use that don't you ever break my heart again clip. We could definitely have some fun with that. We didn't even get to it today. We didn't even get to the don't you ever break my heart again clip. But we could do a whole day on that. So let's save that. We'll come back around to it. Sound of the day today before we get to text of the day today. Anytime you can do it, man. Here we go. Nice job. 400 likes when it's all said and done later today. Cave Street pump up song. I can remember back being an 11 year old kid about 75 pounds on a basketball court against a neighborhood bully. Kicking his behind left, right, and center. And when it was all said and done, he was a little bit upset. So he punched me in the mouth. My uncles were over on the side observing, talking amongst themselves, adult things. When he punched me in the mouth, I decided I'm running to my uncle. You know what he did? He pushed me back to him. I went back and punched me in my mouth again. I ran to my uncle looking for protection. Need a big bro to protect me. He pushed me back again. And you know what I did? I faced him in the eye. And I said, my uncle's not going to help me. So I punched him in the face. 
And then I looked him in the eye and I said, then what? Now what? Now what? Now what are you going to do? Uh, that's nice. I like mixing that in. I like mixing that in. This is uh, this could be a late contender for text of the day here. Big Maple, who's already in the mix for text of the day, comes in with this one. Ken Holland, when he hands Darnell Nurse his 2024-2025 paycheck. You don't even have to open your hand to know what this is. <laughs> Don't you ever break my heart again. That's it, man. That's, that that's text line. of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's text of the day Very right good. there. Big Maple, congratulations, man. You slid in there. Probably had the Ken, AI figure that one out for him. AI, yeah. you. Ken <laughs> Holland, when he hands Darnell, Nick is, Darnell Nurse's 24, 25 paycheck. You don't even have to know. That's great. Don't you ever it's the second break part my heart again. for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> God, that's good. A lot of fun. Uh, all right, that's your text of the day. Congratulations. Text of the day for A and W. Two mama burgers right now. The Juicy Mama's nine ninety nine for two mama burgers. Only until April 14th. So you got to get on these right now. Two delicious, oh. mouth-watering mama burgers for only nine ninety nine at participating W restaurants. Edmonton, St. Albert, Sherwood Park, and Devon. What a deal. To make it even more convenient for you, most A&W drive throughs are open 24 hours a day. Yeah, last week. Go get them. Yeah, you got to get it? on that right now. That ends uh, that ends this this week, so you want to get on that It'll immediately. Final the Tuesday, Stone Tuesday for this deal, as it is. <sighs> it's true. It's true. That is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. Also, if you're looking for something else for lunch today, another option: Popeyes coming at you from the Popeyes Louisiana Kitchen Studio. A new Buffalo Wrap, Buffalo Chicken Wrap is available. Go get the Buffalo Chicken Wrap and get the side of Buffalo Poutine, and let us know how it goes. Let us let us know how it goes. I think you will probably like that a lot. And a flounder sandwich, if you will, for later. <laughs> Popeyes is a sponsor on Oil Stream. Maybe Tommy Gazola and I take a run at some of these Buffalo chicken wraps on uh, Oil Stream Wednesday or Friday or something. Why not? Hey, I think it could be uh, could be a pretty fun time. Pretty fun time. Uh, what are you watching tonight, buddy? What's well, on? Well, it's uh, nothing short of entertainment for this evening. A uh, full slate of games: thirteen in the NHL, fourteen in the NBA. Jays Mariners series uh, will rekindle tonight as well. Game two from Toronto. Bassett getting the call for the Jays this evening. As they look to put two past the Mariners tonight as well. So, yeah, lots of stuff going on tonight. I should have uh, I should have taken a look at a busy sports schedule tonight before committing to something. But uh, tonight, this evening, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going on the road. White Court, Game 7. Oh. Wolverines and uh, Eagles. I'm going somewhere towards downtown Edmonton. I think just south of downtown Edmonton. Anyway, I'm going to uh, record an episode of the podcast with Quinn. And oh, her yeah. podcast partner, Explore, hey. the commish. I figure it's never it's never a bad idea to have the commish owing you a favor, All right? Maybe she's already done a favor in the past in one of the drafts. So yeah, I'm going to uh, I'm going down to uh, record their podcast. We're going to talk sports betting. Yeah, one of the many topics I think you'll be educating yeah. them on the the bets, bad I, bets, good bets. I've got some uh, cool bet sign up codes that I'm going to take with me and hook three more DGens tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, we'll give you more details on that after I uh, I go get it done and when it's going to be out and stuff. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go teach some people about sports betting tonight, which I'm pretty proud of. I'm gonna do a class on it at university. You wearing like a teacher's jacket with the uh, the elbow? Like you should uh, come professor. in. Professor. Yeah, like full, uh, full Mr. Professor. Yeah. <laughs> and I I don't want to wear out my welcome, but I'm also gonna smoke a huge cigar in this person's basement. Well, that's part of sports betting, right? Like yeah. In the end, it's, it's the imagery. Here's how it works. It's the imagery and the yeah yeah yeah. What I'll do is all the example on the podcast tonight that I do with them, I will bet on a game, and while we're doing the podcast, I'll have a flow bone meltdown that the bet's not going to hit, and then you get a real taste it, of yeah, what's yeah, happening. Yeah. <laughs> That's the real way to look at you gotta it. You got to show them all the colors of the yeah 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 because yeah. you you can't get you can't get too mad about sports betting your results. Well, so you they're you not take all winners, the wins, right? yeah, and you take the losses, yeah. And when you win, you're super excited. You talk about it. When you lose, you really don't mention it to anybody. It never happened. But when you ride with somebody else on their play, like Duck Dad on the lock shop yesterday, who said the Diamondbacks minus one and a half was an automatic play, and then I rode with them, and they lost by two, you know, then you call those guys out. 
So today in the lock shop, I'll be going at I'll be going at Duck Dad pretty bad. Maybe the word jackpot pops up a few times. Yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> Another key word actually coming up for the ESC Flyway on the Hangout today. Make sure you stick around for that. Turn on autoplay over on YouTube. I'll take it right over to Maddie and Tommy Domsky from the Oil Kings is here. He's absolutely. Uh, entertaining on the hangout so it's going to be a good one today i'll be back with the lock shop full slate tonight and all of the leagues uh we'll get into that uh and of course we'll continue to get you ready for the masters huge masters show on the lock shop tomorrow i'm talking 60 straight minutes of masters betting tomorrow on the lock they're on the range uh, there it's starting should be a lot of fun should be a lot of fun for youtube trev and lieutenant eric and uh we're going to hit 400 probably a little bit later on today what are we at? Uh, what are we at right now for the uh, for the likes? Three ninety. So, hey, yeah. people watching, somebody watching this afternoon will be able to hit that thumbs up for the four hundred and we'll be get special. It. We'll get it here. In the It'll be special. You, you think me? somebody can do 10? it right now? Come on, I, I just, somebody can do ten before we log off to make the streak three in a row. Ten is such a. You don't want to leave till we get ten more likes. All right, hammer that thumbs it's up. Gotta we be need that ten easy, more likes, right? What if we have to sit here for five more minutes? That's an ironic problem. We got, we got stuff to do. Hangout will be delayed until we get to... Uh, I, I, look, I'm not ruling anything here. I'm just saying it, it, we should be able to get 10. I think we might have maxed out. I'm not doing a sit-in here. I think those 10 might have to come uh, after the fact in the archive show watchers a little bit later on, which is nice for them to have a role in well, it. Well, they, they, yeah, everybody right. plays a part here. Yeah. If you're watching this in the middle of afternoon live. on April 9th, we love you. We wish you could join us live, but we love you. We appreciate yeah. the views. We appreciate the subs. How's it going in the future, hey? And, of you course, like we that. appreciate the likes. Yeah. Yeah, that's 396. 396. We need four more likes. Okay, come on. Imagine guys. somebody sitting there right now watching. They have the power. And being like, you have the power to give us. We got hey. it? Oh, YouTube, we got it. All right, see you guys later. That's it. Talk to you tomorrow. Take it easy.